And we are back live once again here on the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey, producer Chris behind the scenes. For the first time since free agency began, we're not asking the pin poll, are the Cowboys going to sign somebody? They already made, they made the move late last night, which was, to be quite honest, terrible timing for me. It happens. They got Eric Kendricks on a one-year deal with the details still to be determined. Um, haven't seen the full contract yet. One year. I'm going to guess this comes in at maybe $4 million. Maybe. I'm, I'm going to guess this is going to come in of about what they were going to try to pay uh, Leighton Van Der Esch. Would, would, would be my guess. So grade the signing for me of Eric Kendricks. A, B, C, D, or F. Not knowing the details, I think this should at least be a B. Also hilarious that you stole him from the 49ers. Kind of funny. I, we, uh, what was the line? I think I, I mentioned it in our live show. Like, ah, you know, about once a year, uh, you know, that happens. Someone gets gets flipped. Well, it happened. <laughs> uh, and I, I think what happened here is um, the Cowboys didn't call Kendricks beforehand. And then he goes to the Niners and the linebackers go off the market and they go, ah, you know, we should try to do this maybe. I think this, this kind of feels like a Zimmer move, you know? Like Zimmer was the one who kind of orchestrated this all in the end because you needed a veteran linebacker. You could still draft a linebacker early if you want to, but in terms of the need priority list, that goes down pretty significantly. So like, uh, Zane, is, can Eric still play? Yeah. Uh, he, 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 yeah, he can. He's not the same athlete he was in his prime, but his instincts are still really good. He can still stop the run. He's not someone I want to consistently throw out in a bunch of key coverage spots, but he can do soft drop zones. He can do all that stuff. So he's not, he's not the most impactful player anymore. He's not the guy he was at his absolute best when there was a while. I was like, this is guy one of the better linebackers in football, but he's still a very good football player. And that, that helps. He can still stop the run. He can still do some blitzing stuff for you. He's still intelligent. And he knows this 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 defense with Mike Zimmer, uh, so clearly the whole uh, you know, it's funny. Kendrick's makes a comments like uh, ah Zimmer rules with fear or, or whatever, and then goes out of his way to make sure he comes back to play with Mike Zimmer and the Dallas Cowboys. So you know, I think it was always there was re there was respect on that front, which is, is a good thing. Um, so this particular signing, I think it's at least a B. Now. We'll get to the pin poll here later on today of the current free agency. Uh, one move does not justify everything else that's gone on. And I will take full credit for this. I will take credit for the, uh, the, the signing. I, I think it was the clown thumbnail. I think it was me, and I think it was, uh, it was Connor uh, threatening to do uh, meth or whatever it was. They didn't sign somebody in an hour. And they did it by like within 50, they did like 55 minutes for Connor. So I think we did it. I, I, I think it's us. I, th I think this is a great example of bullying works. Now, it, it, it takes a lot of bullying to get this team to do anything. It took us 20 years of Jimmy Johnson stuff to get there. But I think bullying works. I do think bullying works. JT, is there smoke to the Dalvin Cook stuff? Also, what does he even have left in the tank? Great notes. Uh, let's hit the, the, two, the graphics we have for this. Um... My fault credit? I, I, I don't know. I was like the one that pointed out. Uh, so Dalvin Cook last night uh, followed several Cowboys-focused people. It was, it was uh, uh, Deffy Talk. I think that's how you pronounce it. For, I don't know if you pronounce it Deffy or Deffy. I always pronounce it as Deffy, but I've only seen it written. Uh, RJ, Skip, Ernie, uh, Martin Talk School, Marcus. They, so if he followed all those guys on, on, on Twitter and then had like two tweets – about the Cowboys looking to do something in the running back market and the, the, the Cowboys signing Eric Kendricks. Now, maybe that's him, you know, liking tweets because he played with Eric Kendricks. I don't know. But those two together is kind of weird because he didn't really follow other media people except for, like, the Jets and Vikings. The issue is for, for Dalvin Cook, he's Dalvin Cooked. He, he's not, he was not good last year. Like, we had talked about him last offseason. I'm like, guys, I don't know if he has much left in the tank. The signs of regression were there. I don't think he's going to be as good this season. And then he was even worse than I thought he was going to be. Uh, this, this, is, this was truly one of the least efficient running backs. Once he got above like, like the 50-carry the, the threshold because 
everyone else above that figure is kind of like not in, in real moments of playing time. He had one very good run for the Ravens in the playoffs. Uh, some people try to take a victory lap on it, and then he had like eight carries for like uh, 10 yards or 11 yards or something. So like it wasn't, it wasn't very good. Um, I, I think A.J. Dillon's better. I think Ezekiel Elliott's better. I think there are multiple better backs available. I think Rico Dowdle's a better player. Um, I know it's a name, but it was not. It does not. It does not move the needle for me. C.J. DeYoung the third, bring back Sean Lee. Uh, if Sean Lee, Sean Lee is not still playing, uh, well, there was the, the surprise photo of of Dak and Sean Lee. I think they. I think they just happened to be at the same vacation spot. Because you could kind of tell, like, you could tell that Sean Lee and his wife had just come in off the slopes. Because, like, they were still, like, like, in their ski gear or snowboarding gear, whatever it was. And then Dak and his girl were in the, uh, uh, were, like, in their, like, dinner wear. Like, they were not ready to do anything snow-related. So I think it's, like, they had, like, Dak saw Lee or vice versa. And, like, it was just kind of a funny moment there. But, no, he's, he's trolling, I know. I would love to make Sean Lee a coach. Uh, I have my doubts as to whether or not uh, Sean Lee wants to coach at this stage. Ecuador man, have to save some money. One super, no broke RB, Z or Cook. I think you can get a basically uh, veteran minimum contract at running back with like four or five different guys. I, I think there's enough options out there on that market that you'd be able to get somebody. It's the top, top 10 guys left, right? J.K. Dobbins is out there. Dobbins is the most interesting and also like the most risky angle of this like if he's healthy he's by far your best option is he gonna be healthy though no idea dalvin cook i thought did not play very well alexander madison and, and uh i think uh aj Dillon, who i definitely should have put in here and i guess i didn't do that somehow um so if you want to change that one chris to get uh uh, pull, pull Kareem Hunt and put A.J. Dillon in there. I don't, I don't know why I didn't have Dillon in there. He should obviously be. We've talked about him so much already. Um, those guys are like replacement-ish level, like early down backs. De Deonta Foreman kind of in a similar category too. Ezekiel Elliott, the, 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 the decline has really set in. Kareem Hunt, the decline has set in really badly too. Dalvin Cook. Jarek McKinnon, McKinnon, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Cordero Patterson could do some third down stuff for you, but... You know, CPAT's getting up there in age. So you, you kind of have, have missed the, the market uh, for a lot of the top running backs out there as I sip some water. Hold on. So I think what their, their plan in some capacity, I think that their plan always was cheap running back, draft pick. I think what they would have liked to have done was sign a Pollard Gibson level player and then draft like a Braylon Allen. With the available market out there, they might have to kind of pivot off that and go to like the early down back, a Foreman, a Dylan, and try to draft someone a little bit more explosive, a, a Jalen Wright, a Trey Benson, because uh, you, you can't just have you can't just have two slow backs. Like that's not that's not going to bring you the juice that you need. That's why I think of all the moves like the, the Moss one kind of stung stung me the the most. Brian says hashtag Storm the Star. Thank you, Brian. Let's go to our super chat menu here, real quick, uh, producer Chris. Since we got some fives coming in here, uh, we'll go super chat menu supers, and then our uh, the, the pin poll today. I am. They did something. I I am in a better mood. If you can't tell, that is not to say that it excuses the complete lack of an action everywhere else. Here is today's super chat menu: ten dollars signed Drew Pearson mini helmet entry. $50, Beer Bong Hall of Fame. We, we have uh, seven beers, I think, left. I think it would be great to do, uh, to do all of them today. Up to you guys, though. Deal of the day is a $20 shot as well. I'll also do this. Two for one for the first Beer Bong and for the first shot. For everything. Two for one on the first of everything. How about that? Make it simpler and easier to track because... It's filled now. It got a fresh one because there was like, it was like, it was like underneath of the label. Like they were for the northern aggression. There was not, there was not going to be enough left uh, at, at that point. So two for ones for the first one on all of the super chat menu items today. 
10 for the sign Drew Pierce and mini helmet entry, 50 for the Beer Bong Hall of Fame, 20 for a shot. From Yeekaw, who is also our Ravens fan here at the Cowboys Report, which it's perfect, right? Yeekaw, like it's just, it, it's just it's the profile picture, everything about it is, is just mm, chef's kiss. Uh, hey, Tom, glad Dallas did something in stealing uh, Kendrick's FU San Fran. Hope this isn't just the beginning, they don't stop there. They are not done yet. This might be their biggest splash. A veteran linebacker, which like you needed. You know, now maybe you can do what C1 is suggesting. Resign Tyron Smith, bring back Stephon Gilmore, sign J.K. Dobbins, add A.J. Dillon. That's, you know what, relative to some previous years, better than most. Fitting line uh, given the Players' Championship this week. But I, I am very worried about the Jets and Tyron Smith. So when I tweeted out this this morning of, hey, I think it'd be cool if the if uh, RFK Jr. just announced Aaron Rodgers as, as his VP candidate, and then Tyron Smith goes, ah, I'm actually not going to go to the Jets. Scratch that. Like that. Let's make it happen. I don't think it's actually going to happen. It's 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 too ridiculous to actually go down. But wouldn't it be wouldn't it be something there? So like. I, I want to bring back Tyron Smith. I want to bring back Stephon Gilmore. I think those guys can be affordable. They, they fit your scheme, obviously. You know them really well. The longer they go without being signed, the better that chance exists. Dobbins and Dylan in a draft pick, it's fine at running back. It's not sexy, but you're also not paying it very much. It just, it, but the, again, the, the, the thing, it can't, it can't be you lose Smith, you lose Gilmore, you sign Kendricks and Dylan, and that's it. Like, that's not, that's not going to be enough. I think Dylan will be better wherever he is this upcoming year than what he was last year. There's a reason why he's unsigned after all the back sign and why he's going to be so cheap. From Justin, what do you think we do with the draft picks? 1, 2, and 3, 24, 56, 87. And you go after Michael Thomas, knowing Gallup will, will be gone. If you are upset with Michael Gallup for not being as good coming off of his injuries, you're really not going to like Michael Thomas. I have zero desire to add him. He's just going to complain about his role. He's done that every year. He's very much a diva, uh, which is fine when you're good, and then it kind of falls off quickly. Uh, he offers me nothing but short stuff. I, it, who would I rather throw a slant to, Michael Thomas or CeeDee Lamb? Obviously, CeeDee Lamb. I, I, if I'm going to go get a new receiver, I want someone with some speed and juice, and that is not what Michael Thomas is. Rounds one, two, three. Trying to find starters or key rotation pieces. So offensive line as of right now, it, it got to be something there. I got to pick one guy. You need corner help with Gilmore unsigned for now. You, you, you need a running back too. You'd love to get some more trench play here. But your offensive line right now is a little bit dicey. It is. Tyron Smith out there is, is an unsigned free agent. I hope you keep him. Tyler Smith, Brock Hoffman, Awesome Richards, Zach Martin, TJ Bass, Terrence Steele, maybe Matt Willetsko are going to be on this roster. So, you know, that's five, six, seven maybe guys. That's room for two or three. Got to do something. Um, you know, linebacker I think you're okay with, but what I would like to do is get other players to fill various needs, even on the cheaper lower end. That way if, you know, Edrin Cooper's there in round two, sweet. I, I, I take him and I'm thrilled about it. Because right now, like if I don't address my offensive line or running back, I, I'm, I probably got to go for a need rather than best player on the board. Zeno's saying, it's really amusing that our rivals love to attack us, yet constantly always want our players, even though we, they say we suck. It is very funny to see Commanders fans say the Cowboys are bad and then every year sign multiple Dallas Cowboys. Super funny to see that happen every time. Um, it's, it's, it's frankly hilarious if I, if I'm being honest, um, just how it all always goes, always goes. Alex, Fon Gilmore at this point would be an excellent free safety. I don't even know if he has the full range to play free safety. I, I think he's got some more time at corner. Like, I think he can still play corner for you. I don't think safety is a huge need for you. If you find the right value player, sure, go for it. But I think you're covered off between Malik Hooker, Donovan Wilson, Wanye Thomas, Marquise Bell. It's a fine quad. It's not that expensive either. And, hey, maybe you fall in love with the safety. But when they listened to me and drafted Brian Branch last year, Brian Branch is exactly what they need right now at that nickel corner safety hybrid role. 
I would, by the way, I'd call about Dax Hill of the Bengals. Bengals did not get great play from Daxton Hill at kind of a safety spot. I thought his best spot coming out was nickel corner, frankly. Uh, Bengals have a really good one in Mike Hilton already in there. They have they also signed Von Bell, Geno Stone, and drafted Jordan Battle in the third round last year. So somebody can go do it. I, I would certainly have interest there. JT says OBJ over Michael Thomas then. Sign Lyell for flex. Curious what happens with, with, with Collins. Um, he could have signed any. He was a practice squad player. So this is not like Collins is into you know day four free agency. He's been a free agent since January. Nobody's picked him up. That's kind of a red flag for me. You know, maybe, maybe he, know, maybe the practice stuff wasn't great. Like you would think Dallas would know better than anybody. So I'm gonna fully trust them on on Collins. Like they they would know better than anybody what the status is. And you know, maybe Collins wants a bigger deal. That's certainly possible. Um, but I'll, I'll wait and see on that front there. I still know he, he can't play left tackle. I don't know if he can play guard. They kind of started him at guard at practices, so you know we'll see. But again, I would I would trust them on on that front there. Uh, OBJ over Michael Thomas. I mean, I guess yeah, OBJ over Michael Thomas. But like the receiver market's pretty bad. I I honestly probably wouldn't want to sign a, a more than a, a very cheap veteran because you're not going to get a massive upgrade over Cooks or anything. So you're got a receiver three again. You want to pay a premium for that, like. Odell Beckham's out there. Chenault's out there. I, ain't, I wouldn't be mad at Cedric Wilson because he can also help me on special teams. And I, I think I want that receiver four, three, whatever, to help me out on special teams. You know, Curtis Samuel could maybe do return stuff for you. I'm intrigued by C Cedric Wilson. I don't believe Mike Gallup will be on this team. Uh, you know, in the next, by the time we do our next live show on Monday, barring news, Mike Gallup will not be on this team. I would be blown away and unbelievably confused if he was. And I would be upset about it. It doesn't make financial sense. It doesn't make roster sense. Um, but what I'd like to do is fill all my needs. And that way, if a receiver falls to me early in a great receiver class, I can just take one. I can just take one. Uh, Danny Whitney says, go get Mike Williams. Of the receivers out there, that's by far the biggest name. I would be surprised. Like, I don't think this team wants to spend on a wide receiver. Because they've, they're going to have to pay C.D. Lamb. They're paying Brandon Cooks a fair amount. Do you want to also pay receiver two and three when receiver one's going to get a big-time contract? And I think for Mike Williams, you know you're probably going to be able to get a bigger role elsewhere. Like, if you're Mike Williams, would you rather be option three or four in Dallas or go to New England and be option one? I think, or go to Carolina and, and help out that organization. So... Um, I would not be mad if they did it, but I would be surprised if they did. Dwayne, with the release of Mike Williams, should the Cowboys sign if they're not already pursuing him? Again, I think the injuries are kind of a, a red flag there, too, in terms of, like, what, the, what his status is. I would not be mad at it, but I would be surprised if they went big at all in the wide receiver market. I, I, would, I would rather spend my self-imposed limited money on offensive line, defensive line, corner, because I, I could certainly draft somebody from that standpoint. Uh, Bryant, trade back in the first to get an extra third or fourth. Two notes here. I'll answer this in a second. Uh, Desmond Ritter has been sent to the Cardinals for Rondell Moore, which is fascinating. Um, which is, Moore was not very good last year. Neither was, uh, um, let me sip some water here. Um, not, not, neither was Ritter, but it's a fun trade. So it, it, it's a rare player flair trade. Those are always fun. Ryan, trade back in the first to get an extra third or fourth. Uh, yeah. As long as you're not trading away from a really good player on your board, I'm, or if there's a bunch of guys on your board, I'm all for it. Um, because I'd love to get an extra third or fourth. I always feel better about my drafts if that happens. But every time I do the draft sim. There's still someone who falls that I'm really not sure is going to fall. Uh, like you, and I think the teams behind you have some similar ish needs along the offensive line. So I, I would have interest there, but it, it depends on how the board ends up falling. Ecuador man AOG, pick 80 Mitchell, trade Cooks for, the four, for a four. Interested? I think I might just keep Cooks and draft AD Mitchell. 
And I'll go with Lamb, Cooks, and Mitchell out there at wide receiver. It's a really fun trio. And Mitchell does some things that some of your guys don't currently do. He brings you some size. I like A.D. Mitchell a lot. I think I'd probably have to get him in the first round, unfortunately. Um, but it's it, 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 it'd be intrigued. And I'd like to have the, the flexibility to do that. But I need to do some more stuff in free agency. Because um, basically it's like, now maybe if, if I could get, depending on maybe who I could get with the fourth round pick, you could talk me into it a little bit there. But I don't want to give up even more speed than what I have. But I do like that idea of A.D. Mitchell quite a bit. I just got to I gotta fill more needs. Because if I don't have a center or a left tackle, I feel like I got to spend that first round pick there. For every 250 likes on today's live show, we will do a beer cheers. We've only got 10%-ish who have liked today's video. Those are rookie numbers. We got to get those rookie numbers up. So like that video for me right now on today's show. We're at 142 now on the like side. 100 away, asking 10% of you who are watching to like it. That is it. Like that video for me right now. As I come into the news here that's happened, Nathan Peterman's a saint. <laughs> he sucks. Uh, Josh Johnson's a fun backup. He's going to re-sign with the Baltimore Ravens. Deshaun Elliott is going to the Pittsburgh Steelers on a two-year $6 million deal. Daryl Hodge is back with the Atlanta Falcons. Details not yet known. Very bad offensive lineman Storm Norton with an this this is the worst this is the worst one. This is the worst example of my name theory. You would think a dude named Storm is awesome. He's not. He's actually pretty bad. Uh, Anthony Pittman, who apparently was a Lions player, I I go get me the beer because I got a drink for that one. I don't know that one. Uh, I, I assume he's a core special teamer, but like, it is it is very rare that I go, who's a player? And it, it, was, it was Anthony Pittman. Yeah, probably because he played at Wayne State. If you ever want a shot, if you can name where Wayne State is. Like, he just... I just I, I, I just didn't know that one. Ah, get, get me one of the hard Mountain Dews. I'll have some more fun with that. But we'll keep this one out here, too. Uh, he's got four tackles last year as a special teamer. Like it's, I don't know. I, I felt felt unfair that I didn't know that one, but I ended up not knowing uh, that one, which was very frustrating. There we go. Hard Mountain Dews, much more fun. Uh, Von Bell, by the way, back to the Bengals on a vet minimum deal. Uh, by the way, the Panthers owe him a lot of uh, base salary offset, so he's getting six million dollars from Carolina. <laughs> This year, Bengals got him ultra cheap. And they got a comp pick for him, too, by the way, which was hilarious. Uh, Giovanni Ricci is going to the Browns. That's backup, you know, tight end, fullback guy, H-back. Uh, Tony Brown, man, Sam is throwing in all the random, like, you know, exclusive rights free agents and stuff there. Uh, Tony Brown, he's a corner. Uh, I'll, I'll, let, let me double check on that one. I think I'm right on that one. Uh, hold on. Tony Brown, NFL. Oh, he's a corner, counting it. Oh, that's right. He was the guy that got suspended uh, from the Colts late last year. So first off, the beer trees for not knowing Anthony Pittman. Tony Brown's been crazy for a long time. That's a, he's a Bama, Bama guy, guy, right? Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. You, yeah. you do him He was for talking sure. about um, Hunter Renfro after the national championship game. He like, went off on this reporter. It was very Richard Sherman-esque when he went off on the reporter after, what was it, Super Bowl or the? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it's a pretty funny video if you go find it one, uh, sometime. Uh, Ty Johnson back with the Buffalo Bills. That's a re-signing on that front there. C.J. Mosley restructured his deal to not get cut by the Jets. One of your other defensive tackle options, Quinton Jefferson, uh, goes to the Browns on a one-year deal. NWI, Nick Westbrook-Akina, re-signing with the Tennessee Titans on that front. Sheldon Rankins got paid by Tennessee Two years, 26, or by the Bengals, two years, 26, as the defensive tackle market has been a wild and one this year. Kevin Givens back to San Francisco. Joe Flacco, I think they've got pretty much caught up uh, at this stage then on, on a lot of these deals with the quarterback. Jonah Williams, we'll go to that one. That one matters. Setting the markets uh, for offensive tackles, two years, $30 million. 
So I'm very curious what Tyron Smith could potentially end up getting there. That's typically you add a year, you add $2 million per year, so $15 million per year on a short deal. Pretty good deal for Jonah Williams. Coleman Shelton, by the way, the, uh, one of the last starting center options is off the board. Uh, the Bears have added him on a one-year contract. So that kind of leaves Connor Williams as like the starting center option out there in free agency. It's not a, uh, it's not a particularly good group on that front. By the way, we are 13 likes away from doing the beer cheers on today's show. From Michael, cards went from the worst wide receiver room to the worst wide receiver room. <laughs> yes. Uh, with Marquise Brown, a free agent, their receiving core right now is led by Michael Wilson, Zach Pascal, Greg Dortch. I'm going to play a game with you, Chris. I'm going to read off a name. Do you think these names are real receivers for the Arizona Cardinals? Okay. Dan Chisnia. Real or fake? Real. Correct. Andre Bacellia. Real. Real. Caden Davis. Fake. Real. Oh. Daniel Arias. Real. Real. Jeff Smith. That's fake, right? That's real. Oh my God. I it just sounded too generic. I left him last for a reason. Yeah, yeah that's their wide receiving core. Um, so it's not it's not great. Um not, not a great group. That will change once they draft or get one of Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze if they trade down. Uh, so they'll be fine at wide receiver long term. But that, that, that is, I mean, you talk about all, think about all the assets Arizona has given up over the years at wide receiver. They've spent top 75, I think, picks on Rondale Moore, on uh, Andy Isabella. They traded a first for Marquise Brown. They traded a, a two for DeAndre Hopkins. They spent a top 80 pick on Michael Wilson. And like none of those guys have worked for Kyler Murray. <laughs> like all of them. And maybe that's, that's, that's a team thing. It's a player thing. It might be a quarterback thing a little bit too. Just saying. Zeno saying, has Dak Prescott surpassed Romo in Cowboys quarterbacks? Oh, I'm sure that won't lead to controversy at all. Um, so games played... Romo still has them at their numbers side by side here. Still has about 40 extra games played on, uh, on uh, deck at this time. Uh, their records are slightly in, uh, I guess starts are a little bit different. 114 on the starts for Dak and 127 for Romo. So not that far off, I guess, when you get to some of the backup stuff there. Uh, completion percentage favors Dak. Uh, the win loss percentage. Pretty sure looking at just the eyeball math favors Dak. Not by a lot. Both guys won a lot of games. Go figure. Uh, yards per attempt is slightly actually in favor of Tony Romo. That seems important. Touchdowns are 202 for Dak against 248 for Romo. Interceptions are, even with the games played, in favor of, of, uh, of the Dak side of things there. Uh, the playoff records, which is I know how everyone tends to do it. Both guys have two wins. They're really, again, it's the hard-to-swallow pill. The Romo Cowboys and the Dak Cowboys are the exact same thing. Last year's playoff game felt a lot like that Vikings playoff disaster to me. Just sometimes it's the quarterback's fault. It's not always and normally isn't the quarterback's fault. And ownership has not changed. And that's where I think the real issue is. Uh, news item here, by the way, Joey Bosa has agreed to a restructured contract with the Chargers. Might be a pay cut, might not be a pay cut, uh, but Bosa will not be going anywhere uh, as he's going to stick around with the new Harbaugh-led Chargers. By the way, Jerry Tillery with the Vikings uh, one year up to nearly $4 million. Uh, the first round pick has not been very good. I think that's a bit of an overpay. But again, the DT market's been wild in this offseason. Justin. Tom, would you get Worthy or Mitchell or Coleman if you could and get a good tackle in the third or se second round? Now, let's see what names you think you're going to get at tackle in the third or second round. Because I'm, I'm anxious about finding a good one there. Now, maybe Sumataya falls to you, but I think those tackles are going to go pretty early. Uh, but I, I will tentatively rake them uh, Mitchell, Worthy, Coleman. 
I, 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 want the, I, I want the explosive play juice that Mitchell and Worthy bring me. And maybe it ends up being a George Picking situation where one of them falls to you in round two. Unlikely, but there could be a good receiver there in round two. From Lance Dunbar's burner. Two for one, drink up, boys. You got it, Lance Dunbar's burner. Uh, if someone offers you a third for Lance, do, do you do it before the draft? If you want to try to win games now, yeah, I would. Uh, can you give me a napkin, too? Sorry, I already spilled a little bit there. First one going down. Oh, sweet, there already is one. Nice. So I always put one out, and then I just I didn't on that one. And I spilled some on my shirt, too. That'll dry. We're good. This looks like a, a line on the shirt. Uh -huh. Maybe I'll change out. Who knows? Bottoms up. Maybe I'll go to, we'll do a shot challenge and I'll change shirts so it doesn't dry up before we start getting the cuts here. Uh, anyway, uh, trade Lance for a third. Yeah, you you flip him for more than what than what you paid for him without doing anything. That's a no brainer for me. I would be blown away if a team did that. I, I think I think that would blow me away. Uh, Rush to be about anyways. We can finally bring back the nooch. Also, uh, what whiskey is that? It looks good. Uh, not a sponsor. Northern aggression. So it's the opposite of those. So it's it's not north, it's south. It's not aggression. It's it's comfort. Okay. Not a sponsor though. Uh, Michael does Rankins is it to get Dallas shot at Re Reader? Doesn't change things. Rankins is to Osa Odigizua as Reader is to Jonathan Hankins. They're, they, they both play defensive tackle. Their roles are completely different. Now, I, I would say it's maybe not even the Bengals you have to worry about the most for Reader. You might be a little bit more worried about Detroit for, for him. He's going to visit. The medicals are going to get checked out. And I think we'll know if the medicals passed or not and how much he ends up getting. Um, I would love to get DJ Reader. Not sure that his agent's going to call the Cowboys, and that means they might not be doing much. From We Don't Wife, these 304s. Coleman at 24, you're my hero. He, he won't be that far behind my board, uh, but he won't be the 20, he won't be in, in my top 24. Probably wouldn't be the top receiver on with Keon Coleman from FSU. And I, I think there's gonna be an offensive lineman that I want and probably need a little bit more. What I'd like to do is fill my needs so I can just go pure BPA, and maybe, maybe that ends up being Coleman for them. Um, pair him up with his alleged CD Lamb cousin. I'm still not sure if they're like actually, you know, blood related cousins or if this is like we grew up together, that's my cuz, you know? Like we, like Olivia like we'll, we'll, we'll say Olivia, you know, calls, you know, my my, my our good friends aunt and uncle. We're not actually related. It's not actually aunt and uncle, but that's what we just call them. You know, because they're they're we're good friends. But I don't know if it's so I don't know if it's like actual cousins or like they grew up together and therefore are Cousin. They grew up in the same very small town. Uh, I think it was Louisiana, by the way. So the Cowboys have made one move. They've signed Eric Kendricks to a one-year deal. Those full details still not yet known. Who do you want to bully the Dallas Cowboys into signing next? Drop that player name for me in the comments section. 250 likes. Cheers. Some water. Get some names in here. Someone said Joey Bosa. He's back with the Chargers. Restructured his deal. Sorry. DJ Reader. I'd love it. Uh, Simmons. Is this Justin or Isaiah? I assume Justin, uh, which I would be on board with. Out of their price tag range. Tyron's a good one. Just somebody, please. Uh, let's see. Chris Jones, the punter. Jamal Adams. He's a personal friend. I'm recruiting him hard. Uh, A.J. Dillon, A.J. Dillon and J.K. Dobbins. Justin Matabike has been signed already, sorry. Uh, D.J. Reader, Stephon Gilmore, Steven Nelson, Jerome Baker. Boss Man Fat. Uh, Deontay Foreman and Superman. Where are you going to play Superman? It, it, it's got to be quarterback, right? Right? It, it's quarterback. Like, he takes the ball and just goes. You can't stop him. Or, or, do, you, or do you just put him, like, at, at running back and just give him toss plays? 
I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Probably, probably just quarterback to keep it simple. Uh, you still got to throw it, though. So, like, I think you just try, you try, you try to limit it. It, it, it. It's probably like grade school, right, where, like, the best athlete plays quarterback. And that's kind of what it is. Uh, Devin White. Mm-hmm. I think he's going back to Tampa anyway. Uh, don't love that one, though. I don't think he's very good. Uh, uh, bring old Troy Aikman back. The flash at running back. Yeah. He's... Although, would they, would they call him for... Uh, he's a two-way player. Running back and, and, and uh, probably put him at like edge rusher, right? And he just goes to steal the ball each snap. Cheating, by the way. It would definitely be outlawed. You would definitely have to have a uh, supers-only football league. Put him at like slot corner or corner, just have him come on blitz come on all the blitz? time. Yeah. Uh, how about Chase Young? It, it, the longer he goes, worse his market is. Wouldn't be surprised if he ended up in Carolina. Um, but I, I would monitor that one. Like, I think you can find the edge market for the veterans has been, been kind of quiet. I think you can find a new uh, Dante Fowler one year, $3 million ish for a good, good number three, number four edge. Uh, Connor Williams actually does make some sense. Batman. Okay, so where, where's Batman playing? Batman's the owner, isn't he? He's just rich. He, he's yeah. owner, head coach. Yeah. Got a plan for everything. Uh, I, I saw Eagles tampering. Uh, maybe. Everyone does it, though. But whatever. Uh, you get five, Chase Young for $5 million, I'd probably ha- have interest there. Uh, Eric Armstead would be the dream. I doubt it. Iron Man's got to play receiver, right? Because he, cause he's kind of a diva. Yeah. Yeah. He's definitely. He's a, he's, he's a receiver corner hybrid. He's your perfect jump ball guy, too. Yeah. He can go up. Yeah. 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 Um... Daniel thinks Ty and Smith's going to be signed up for the draft. I doubt it. I think he's going to sign soonish. Um, Isaiah Simmons, trade Gallup for Tyler Algier. The Falcons are actually kind of now like loaded at wide receiver, by the way. They're, they're in really good shape, so I don't see it happening. Uh, Hawkeye at quarterback. Well, if you have Superman, it kind of defeats the whole purpose. Uh, but yeah, probably, probably Hawkeye at QB. Hulk is definitely your, uh, your left tackle and your nose guard. He's playing both, and 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 you have the uh, the the fridge package where he's just uh, he's in there at fullback for a handoff. Hollywood Brown, okay, probably gonna be too expensive there. Cordero Patterson, I wouldn't hate it. Uh, me at corner, I always liked playing corner. Corner was fun. I don't have to tackle that much. Um, trade Gallup, Cooks, and picks for Justin Jefferson. You still got to add all the draft picks to to get him. So it's just it's just not gonna happen. David Irving, not a Cowboys legend. Uh, let's see. Justin Simmons, I'd have interest there at the right cost. I don't know if it's feasible, but I, I'd have interest in it. Um, Spider-Man at corner. Yeah, he, he's receiver in corner. Maybe maybe he's your free safety because he, he just webs everything up. Uh, captain America, pro, he, I, he might be a good quarterback too. Yeah. He's definitely going to be your, your captain. Ooh, lightning out there. Uh, Josh Reynolds, I bet he goes back to the Lions. Um, I wonder if I could pick up on the mic, by the way. That, that, that big old Thunderbolt. Really if you guys heard it, tell me. Uh, Curtis Samuel, like, of your receivers, that makes sense to me. All right, some super chats coming in. We'll get to those here. Uh, it's kind of, kind of slowing down in free agency, by the way. You can very much tell, uh, that things are slowing down there. Eli Aaron, it's okay, guys. We got Deuce. I think Corm could be available if Dallas trades down for an early third. My fourth year of the channel. Happy to have you here, Eli. Um, trade down for an early third? I think that's possible. Yeah. I kind of wonder if, he, if he's a charger at the, at the top of the third, though. Like, doesn't that make sense? Harbaugh gets his guy to pair with Gus Edwards. Doesn't that make sense? We'll see. Um, but I think there will be a good back for you. you th- there's a chance the number one back is on the board at, in round two still. Chance someone good is there. Good chance someone good is there in, in round three. So yeah, see, we'll see how, how it all, all you know, plays out there. Brito Pohl, Tom, are the Jones boys tanking the season? I don't think so. Um, I think this is a team that doesn't want to commit either way. Because if, if you were trying to tank, why just sign a veteran linebacker? If you were trying to tank... Why have you not moved on from anybody that's not going to be here the next two years? 
I, I think what they are doing is they're just trying to not go too far one way or the other on anything in 2024, 2025. They're trying to maintain the, the status quo. And I think that's a bad idea overall. But I don't know. Maybe we can say it's a soft reboot, which I kind of hate most soft reboots because, like, what's the point? Are you, are you going to tell the origin story again, or are you just going to skip and pretend we all saw it? Like, this, this is kind of like it's Sony Spider-Man stuff. Like, it's not actually very good, um, and they don't really know what they're doing. And thankfully, we're not M Madam Web quite yet. But we're kind of like the Amazing Spider-Man, where, yeah, it could have been really good, but it's just not quite good enough. Ecuador Man, AOG. Uh, Keon Coleman in the first round, that's the FSU wide receiver. Kingsley Suamatia out of BYU in the second. Or Graham Barton, the Duke offensive lineman. And Trey Benson in the second. Ooh. It's a really good would you rather. Um, given your current needs, and I think just barely ahead of how I would have them ranked. I think I'd go Barton and Benson. So I think Barton could fill a need at left guard or center for me. I do like Suamatia in the second, though. I almost like your, I think I, think I like your first, just the, the Barton over Coleman and Suamatia over Benson, but not by a lot. It's a good either or there. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Barton and Benson. That, that's a good one, though, Ecuador, man. Dwayne Jackson, our first double entry into the signed Drew Pearson mini helmet. So that's two entries there for Dwayne, first and only one. Are you surprised that Justin Fields is still not traded? If he is, what's his trade value? I'm just curious. If I was trading it for, for him for no more than a six-round pick, what is his value? It's a great question. I have no idea. Um, I, I think the Falcons getting Kirk Cousins really put a wrench into the, into the Bears' trade plans there for Fields. Um, now you're kind of into a problem where, you know, who needs a starter at this point? Like, what NFL team out there is going to trade for Justin Fields as a starter? I, I wouldn't presume it to be the New England Patriots. I think they can draft somebody at three. Do the Giants want him? Maybe. First two picks are, are of course, going to be quarterbacks. Other starting needy teams. Steelers are off the board there. Denver, but is he really a fit for what they want to do? Um, no. Beyond that, you're looking at the Giants, the Vikings. The, the market was not very good for him. And I wonder if Denver and Minnesota, I think one of them would have trade up for J.J. McCarthy, potentially. So I don't know what their plan is going to be in the end. I think he does fetch more than a sixth-round pick. But I think that dream of a second rounder is kind of dead. Maybe it ends up being a conditional pick in 2025 based on playing time and stuff and re and re-signing stuff. That might be that might be in the best interest for all parties involved. It's a good question, though, Dwayne. From Michael, even though draft capital is sparse, is there a player out there on a Jones-approved contract you'd like in Dallas? I'm with you on not trading picks, but throw a name out there. How about Khalil Herbert? I, 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 am, I am down to trade my, my day three picks and get a starting caliber player. I think running back stands out as a spot that could make some sense there. Uh, I know many of you would love to get Damian Pierce. I'd, I'd be surprised if the Texans... I know that obviously the, the Texans traded for Joe Mixon. They also played Devin Singletary a lot last year, too. Like It's going to be a committee in Houston. Herbert, I think, is going to be running back three for Chicago. So that's, that's the name I'm calling about. And I'll call about Daxton Hill. Now, he might he's probably more expensive, um, but I think he can play nickel. I think he can. I think he would be best there, frankly. Johnny Henry would just sign Hunter Renfro. Feels like he's a saint. Feels like he's a saint. Um, because they don't have... They, they could use a slot receiver. to Kind of fill that Michael Thomas-ish role of doing slant stuff. Also, like, I have a slot receiver. His name is CeeDee Lamb. Like, he plays a lot of... He plays both inside-outside. Renfro has not been very good the past two years. I think it just makes so much sense for him to go back to, 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 to the Saints and Derek Carr. If they sign him, I would not be, be mad at it, but it's not what I'm like over the moon trying, trying to get. Ramos Lambert, what goes first in the draft? I feel like I need options for this one. Um, in general, I think this team's going to be looking for an offensive lineman 
tackle or center in round one. Maybe you get lucky and one of, you, one of them falls to round two. But running back, linebacker's an option. Um, you know, the defensive line could use some help in corner. Could certainly use some help. Zach Store 99. Of course we need Allen Ball for like six years, $120 million. That is a true Cowboys legend right there. That is a blast from the past name uh, in, at, with Allen Ball. I promise you that, folks. Uh, obviously, a troll answer there. Uh, but you do need cornerback help. You do. Jake Q, $5. Thank you, Jake. Do you think there's a world where we land Brian Thomas in round one and Evandre Sweat in round two? Maybe best available running back in the third, but have to sign offensive lineman in free agency. Yes, but that's also your issue. What offensive lineman are you going to get? Your options right now are you get lucky and bring back Tyron Smith still somehow. You, Josh Jones, Makai Becton, might end up being a bangle, by the way. Um, Connor Williams, you're kind of almost forcing yourself to go lineman early. Uh, I also don't think Brian Thomas will get to you in round one. I think he's going to go earlier than that. Now, Tavondre Sweat might. He might fall to you in round two. I don't think he's a worth a round one pick anyway. Um, but I think if he gets there in, in round two, that's when I have to have some real consideration of it and have two big boys in the middle, um, even though he's not the same immense pass rusher that some of those other big boys have been in recent years coming out. Uh, Chris B, is it just me or do you hate hearing Catboy's voice? It's, it, it, it's, it's annoying because it's just the same thing every damn time. He never adds anything new or insightful. Like Jerry might say something wild and wacky and make you laugh. Stephen Jones just says, ah, well, we like our guys. By the way, do you know how embarrassing it is to be a fan of an NFL team? Every other in executive is locked in, making phone calls, prepping for the draft, and our guys are out there doing PR for the PBR show at AT&T Stadium. Howdy, y'all. I'm here with Kid Rock. Come on. That, I'm, I'm, I'm down at South by Southwest on day one of free agency. You know, talking with, with, with Charlotte about how, ooh, look at all the things I did when we fought with Nike when we first took over the, the franchise. Do your jobs. Someone was like, hey, you know, it's, they, they can multitask. Why? They're not. First off, thank you, Chris, they're not. Second off, like, do the things that matter for your team. Like, don't, don't sit there and, you know, do PBR bull riding in an all-denim getup. Like, come on. Chris B., he always start with, well, due to our cap. He even said that, that you know, the, the first year of the cap is maybe is something that, that can be ignored and that's overblown. And I'm like, this is you saying that, Steven. You always use it. And, like, and he kind of let, let the cap out of, the, cap out of the bag there a little bit of like, ah, you know, the year one caps, whatever. We, can, we, can, we just got to take the, the long-term view of it. But you don't. And this team, for whatever reason, and several in the media are falling for it, of, hey, we're worried about our 2025 cap, where they have $90 million in cap space. They're like, oh, but our dead money. Yeah, you're not paying anybody in 2025. Like, you don't have any big contracts right now on the books for 2025. Like, you, you, have, you have flushed your big deals. The active contracts on this team's books for 2025, and the numbers ebb and flow, but it's around 90. Um, you've, you've got Micah on the books in his fifth-year option deal. You're, in theory, going to extend him and you know, move on at that stage. Terrence Steele may or may not be on the books at that stage still. Michael Gallup will not be. Trayvon Diggs will be. And that is all you have above $9 million per year. That's our $9 million cap hit. Like, that's, that's the thing. You're, like, I know you have to pay Dak in theory and pay Micah and Lamb, and you've got the big deal for Diggs, but that's it. It's not like you're paying Zeke Elliott and Tyron Smith and Amari Cooper, you know, and you've paid Gallup, and you've paid Tank Lawrence, and you've paid Zach Martin. You haven't actually, you don't have any big contracts on, on your books. So yes, your dead money number is high, 
But when you're not, but when your active money number is super low, who gives a shit? That's what frustrates me. That they're they're using this 2025 20, concern when they have the third most players under contract and $90 million in cap space. Come on. Now, if you haven't already, hit that sub button for more free Dallas Cowboys YouTube videos right here on the channel, youtube.com slash at Cowboys TV. It's youtube.com slash Cowboys TV. Don't miss out. Free videos every single day right here on the channel. So great Cowboys free agency so far. A, B, C, D, or F. Get those votes in the comments section. A, B, C, D, or F. It's the pin poll, by the way, as well. 10% say A or B. 19% say C. 30% say D. 41% say F. Chris, unbiased opinion here as I respond to some family stuff. Um, how would you grade the Cowboys for agency? I mean, I think it's a total failure. You're not even re-signing your own guys or extending your own guys. There's plenty of guys that could be extended. There's plenty of contracts that could get worked out, restructured, to help you. I mean, if your biggest claim is you only got $2 million to work with, fix it. I mean, there's so many things that you can do. You're just sitting on your hands. That's not going to fix anything. Like, you get blown out in the playoffs by the freaking Green Bay Packers, and then you say you like your guys. You keep your coach. Like, what are, what are you doing? Like, it's the definition of insanity. Just doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. I just don't get it. Hey, Jordan Lewis is back. Cool. I mean, I know, but. Let's make that its own cup. Okay. So get that prepped and, and uh, put that in production. Need help there. Jordan Lewis is back on a one-year deal. Uh, fully guaranteed, which, you know, certainly makes some sense there. Jordan Lewis is back with the Dallas Cowboys. We'll wait for the details on that one there. Jordan Lewis, one-year deal, uh, no C. Patrick Walker breaking that news. I'm going to update our depth chart here as well, Producer Chris. A one-year deal for Jordan Lewis to return as a member of the Dallas Cowboys. They've done two things. Two things have been done by the Cowboys. I don't count the long snapper as a thing. So Jordan Lewis back to the Cowboys on a one-year deal. Uh, I'll take all bets on how much he's getting on that one-year deal. I'll put the over-under at five. He can still help you. I, I, have, I have no real issues going down that path and keeping Jordan Lewis on your team. That's, that's a nickel corner option for you. Depending on how much it costs, might not take you out of the Stephon Gilmore market anyway. But Jordan Lewis is back. Uh, we'll see what happens with Gilmore. TBD on, on that one. Lewis, there were times last year where he was one of your better run stoppers in your box players. And he was making some good plays on that front. So we'll wait and see what the money looks like here uh, for Lewis. Uh, Sam says it's in the CSV, by the way. Uh, so I'll take all guesses on the numbers there. Uh, news was broken by uh, no C, Patrick Walker of, of Cowboys.com. Um, yeah, Jordan with a U, by the way, Chris. J-O-U, yeah. Uh, One-year deal, his agency's also announced that at this point, too. Don't have the contract details yet. If we don't get those within, like, you know, 10-ish minutes, normally means that deal is, is pretty short. Um, just a good thing to always kind of monitor from that perspective. So I'll put the over-under at 5 to $6, $5 million. I think a good over-under there. Um, for Jordan Lewis. We won't go to the cut uh, until we know exactly uh, what the, the money is, or at least we'll wait a little bit there, but it's the second move for the Cowboys that isn't a long snapper. I'm going to make this the pin pull, by the way, too, Chris. Grade the Jordan Lewis signing, or re-signing. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to give you guys A as an option, too. 
I might, I might regret that one. I'll, I'll do D or F. A, B, C, D, or F for grading the Jordan Lewis re-signing. Uh, which would at least give you pass. Like, now you don't have to get a new starting cornerback. If you want to get one, great. But if you don't, you're, you are survivable for a year. Uh, and I, and I, th I think a one-year deal was pretty fair for Jordan Lewis. By the way, it's not often you get to this level of contracts uh, with one team, by the way. Jordan Lewis has had several contracts now with the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, for all, all the, the crying about Michigan players, that one's actually worked out pretty well for you. Taco certainly, uh, certainly did not. So A, B, C, D, or F. Lots of Bs in there from Rashard Lee. Uh, Yusha says B. Zachary says B. Luis says C. Greg says F. Uh, troll says F, but that's also troll, so maybe that means it's, it's a good, good deal there. I think just great Jordan Lewis resigning with Dallas. You can go ahead and edit it and see if it, how it fits. Uh, B minus still want Gilly. B plus like better than Gilly. That kind of sums things up well. Shouldn't preclude you from being in the Stephon Gilmore market. That just might come down to money uh, in the end. Uh, B, B, C, B minus, D. It doesn't necessarily impact. Oh, that's perfect, Chris. Nice. I don't think it really impacts. Shouldn't directly result in a decision one way or the other on Gilmore. Um, but I, I know that that team likes Lewis. I know that they, they love his toughness, etc. cetera. Um, a, B, C, D, or F. A, B, B. Still chase CB2 in the draft. Then who's... So who's not your, who's not your CB2 then? Diggs or Bland? Now, maybe you're worried about that with Diggs' injury, so I, to I totally get that. Um, but the pin poll results right now, by the way, 15% say A, or sorry, 16% say A, 48% say B, 27% or 28% say C, literally just changed, 9% say DF. So I was right to not merge A and B together. My gut, my gut was right there on that front there. Um... I think I, I think B's about right. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be upset about bringing back Jordan Lewis. Um, I'm not gonna be mad about that. I think that's solid. It, now having it only be Eric Kendricks and Jordan Lewis so far is fairly disappointing. Um, here, let me put the uh, let's put the live links in here. My bad. A, B, C, D, or F. How do you feel about the Jordan Lewis re-signing? I think at some level people who are upset are just like, no matter what they were going to do beyond a blockbuster move, people are going to be upset about it. And I totally get that. Totally do. Oh, I got to change the, the live copy here. Jordan Lewis re-signs. Nice, there we go. And I'll put into the copy, Cowboys Free Agency Tracker. Boom, updated. There we go. Good job there, Chris. Uh, obviously, just make sure we got the weigh-ins and player listicle for him and depth charts good to go. Um, so whenever you're ready, no rush. We'll... Did I do the right one? Uh, I put the wrong doc in there. Maybe. Sorry. Uh, say what? Yeah, that, that should be fine. There, there, there should be a, a list for a, a list something that's made too, though. Uh, sorry, I put I, did, I put the wrong doc apparently to, to trace, which is very dumb of me. So hold on here. Apparently, I'm in the wrong sheet and everything. So you're getting some good behind the scenes insight into everything going on right now. Um, I'll tell Trace it's, it's the wrong doc. Uh, sorry, I'll message him right now because I put it in the. I sent them sent the the support crew the wrong doc here. There we go. Now we're now we're covered. Apparently, Chris, I had a I had a hidden tab pulled up somewhere and didn't didn't realize it. 
So grade that resigning, A, B, C, D, or F for me in the comments section. Uh, Jordan Lewis back on a one-year deal. Some super chats we can go through here. Uh, anyway, I was kind of like not really answering your question. There should be that list for stat built in from previous video in, in Cowboys Master. Oh, okay. That should be fine then. Yeah, I thought I had one in there. It's not, sorry. Uh, from Wes, with Lewis back, what happens with Gilmore? I don't know. Uh, not necessarily, doesn't necessarily mean anything. Um, it, it, would, it wouldn't have been a, a real shock. Sorry, I, I got to respond. People are like, where do you want the copy? That's at the bottom. Um, I, I don't know what happens with, with Gilmore. You know, maybe he's back. Maybe he isn't. I don't know if Gil, I don't know if Lewis resigning means oh he's definitely gone, or if it means like you had to bring back one of them no, no matter what, and you got the good value deal you wanted for Jordan Lewis. That's that'd be my guess uh, from that perspective. Daniel Bustos ten dollars seems to be all in. On the uh, the movement here of, of, of a rebuild. Trade Dak gives C.D. Lamb, Diggs, Bland, and Micah Parsons away to two to three first-round picks in 2024, 2025, 2026. We're wasting their talent with an overpaid quarterback who fills seats and does nothing. I, I would fully disagree on the overpaid quarterback stuff. It does nothing. Second-team All-Pro isn't, isn't does nothing. Like, 12 games isn't doing nothing with wins. Like, you can want more, absolutely. And I will say this. You have a plan of a rebuild. That is, that is It's a teardown, but it's a plan. And having a plan, I think, does still matter. So I might not agree with it, and, and I, I really I don't want to blow it up all that way, but it is a plan. And I think that is better than what we've seen from uh, to an extent, the, the Cowboys uh, at, at, at this stage, uh, which has been a little bit frustrating uh, for many of us, I know. But I, look, the market is the market. I, it's just not, it's not overpaid. Daniel Jones is overpaid. The market's the market. Eli Aaron, producer Chris made this happen. Your turn to take the credit there, producer Chris. Crispy Bacon, J. Lou is one of our guys. Cowboys all in, baby. Better than losing everybody, I guess, right? Not saying it's a great move, but it's better than losing them. Uh, Chris B., do we know Kendricks' contract? Need more players. Uh, at this time, no. We do not know the contract for Eric Kendricks. Um, so we'll, we'll wait and see on that front. Um, I think it'll be a, be a cheap one-year deal, just like Jordan Lewis's deal will be. From Dominator. What are the chances now that we keep both Lewis and Gilmore, Tom? I don't know if they've changed that much. I think there's, I wanted to keep one of them at minimum because you just didn't have the options that were feasible in free agency that were better than some of your guys you had. And I'm a little surprised Jordan Lewis isn't a commander. I kind of thought that one could have gone down. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe they go after Gilmore there. Um, Todd Archer says, possibility of Stephon Gilmore returning remains. I, I would be, I'd be pretty happy uh, if that is the path that they, that they chose to go down there. Because um, I, I do think running it back a corner, like of your moves, actually does kind of work. Uh, now, that's only for corner. There are other things I don't want them to run it back with. But you know, keep, keep that one in mind. Um, Eight Sleep, by the way, is going to be our sponsor for this cup. So you know, it's got the you know, typical flow there of you know, get the sub read early, you know, time of everything as best as possible. Uh, I would like to keep them both. I also would like to keep you know, Tyron Smith. But you at least got one of your cornerbacks back. and Because otherwise, you were standing the barrel of entering the draft with you got Diggs and Bland. Cool. Dude's coming off an injury. Okay, a little bit anxious there. Nashawn Wright, Eric Scott, CB3. Like, that scares me. So, 
we'll see what the exact number looks like. Given the way the Cowboys tend to do business, I would think this ends up being a fairly cheap contract. Um, but we'll see on that front. We'll have to see what that money ends up looking like for Dallas. Um, we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait and see. The pin poll right now is to grade the signing. Almost 500 votes. We're also less than uh, 80 votes of likes away from another beer cheers. 18% say A. 46% say B. 27% say C. 9% say D or F. So I do think I was right uh, to, 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 to make all that happen uh, with, with, to, with the way I was doing the... Uh, the grading. I was worried about like, do I make it A or B? Because everyone's in a bad mood. But I guess I was right. I, I think B is the right answer, by the way. Um, I, I do think B is the proper way to to handle those grades there. So keep those comments coming as well here. A, B, C, D, or F to grade that Jordan Lewis resigning. We'll go to Seth's super chat, then eight sleep off the top for for the for the cut. And then we'll we'll break down the Jordan Lewis move in depth. And then we'll, we'll move on to the, uh, some, some Q&A stuff and the rest of the things we had planned uh, for today's show. Seth says, trade Dak to New England, get May, and rebuild change of scenery. I really don't know if you could make that happen. Um, like, I, like, it, like, here's the way I would look at it. If you are Dak with, with the no trade clause, would you want your team to give up a premium asset that could help you win there? When you or yourself are a year away from free agency. Now, let's say he says, sure, I'll, I'll do the no trade clause. Of your options, I think this is your best one. I also, as we mentioned yesterday, I think the, the mental fandom benefit of hyping up the new young guy is different. You know? It's, it, it's, it's that mental boost of like, hey, this is great. This is also like the third year we've done this. It was trade him to get Tua. Oh, that wouldn't have worked out very well. Trade him for Burrow. That one would have worked out very well. Trade him to get Wilson or Lance or Fields, which wouldn't have worked out very well. But as a rebuild plan, it is, it is pretty darn good there in the end. CJ DeYoung, uh, uh, Joshua Rodriguez, we see your super chats. Uh, Drew, we see him as well. We will get to those. After we break down the news here of the day, which is the Jordan Lewis re-signing with the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys have done a second thing. Long snappers don't count. Today's show on the Jordan Lewis re-signing is made possible by 8 Sleep. I've always slept well. My wife hasn't really. Sometimes it may or may not be my snoring. But everything has gotten better since we got the 8 Sleep Pod 3 cover. I'll tell you all about them later on in today's show. As we break down the second slash third movie cut long snappers uh, of the Dallas Cowboys this free agency cycle, Jordan Lewis is back again as a member of the Dallas Cowboys. A one-year deal, no contract details at this stage beyond it's fully guaranteed, which, duh, to a certain extent, like it would have been weird if it wasn't fully guaranteed because the practicality of it is that it is guaranteed. Uh, it, he was not. He's not going to not make the team in the end. So Jordan Lewis, the second move along with Eric Kendricks that we broke down last night in the uh, bad timing at home video for you guys. It's time we were live when it happened. So it's very, very uh, much easier to do on the fly there. We will have more on Jordan Lewis and all the Cowboys free agency moves right here on the channel. Hit that sub button, youtube.com slash at Cowboys TV for more free videos. Lewis is back to once again be the nickel corner, or at least give them a nickel corner option in free uh, at the position alongside Trayvon Diggs, Deron Bland. We'll come back to what this means for Stephon Gilmore uh, in, in a little bit here later on in today's show. Uh, but, but Lewis was sol pretty solid, frankly, last year for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, he tends to be the one that Everybody blames for everything, but there were multiple games this past year where he was the one making some run stops, where he, he can do zone and he can do man. He is not some elite Kenny Moore-esque nickel corner. 
you're also not paying him to be that, I would assume, having not seen the announced contract details at this stage. But Jordan Lewis does help you. It gives you a third option in the cornerback room. We'll come back to this graphic and what it means for Stephon Gilmore later on. But right now, under contract, you have Trayvon Diggs coming off the ACL tear, Deron Bland, and Jordan Lewis. So you can at least have Diggs, Bland, and Lewis as your starters. And now you're not you know, a month away from having to find a new starting corner in the NFL draft. And that's the type of move this team loves to do in free agency. It's a good move. It's just you, you want more than just that one particular move. Uh, I, I'll put the rough estimation here, the over-under on the contract. Uh, I'm going to go with this maybe around $5 million. Maybe it comes in a little bit less, a little bit more, who knows. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to guess somewhere around that benchmark, maybe even under that figure uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. So, of course, more to come on this move. But grade the Jordan Lewis re-signing with the Dallas Cowboys. A, B, C, D, or F. It is the pinned comment on today's show. So if the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there, type A, B, C, D, or F. So Lewis is back with the Dallas Cowboys. That is a big deal uh, because it gives you the depth that you need. And my grade, by the way, guessing around with the contract, it'll probably be a B. You know, if it comes in at like $2 million, that, that's an A. You got a starting caliber corner for that cheap. I don't think it's going to come in that low. But you needed to have something at corner. In the same way you needed something at linebacker, you had to have more than your backup options, Nashawn Wright and Eric Scott, who like basically weren't able to get on the field for you the past year, year and a half in Nashawn Wright's case. You know what Lewis is. He is not a superstar player. You're not paying him to be one. He is a lower-end starting nickel corner, and that carries value. You had to have one of those guys, unless you thought Israel Mukwamu could finally be that, that piece step forward going forward, which maybe you try him at safety full-time. I don't even know what his best spot is, frankly. Now, as for what it means with Stephon Gilmore, I don't know. I don't know how much this is going to directly impact Stephon Gilmore. Um, Todd Archer says the, the option for Stephon Gilmore is, is to return is still out there. And that would make me a very happy camper. Um, I, I would be happy if they found a way to retain him and, and just ran like running it back at corner, I think does make sense more than some of the other positions on this roster. We'll see what Gilmore's market looks like. I'm willing to bet the Cowboys pulling a trigger on their second move means they probably got Jordan Lewis fairly cheaply, but you could not have one of those two guys back, back two guys back without doing something else in free agency. So I am still hopeful, optimistic, and want to see the return of Stephon Gilmore too. We'll have to and wait and see if that ends up happening. Now today's show, like I mentioned, is made possible by 8 Sleep. It's the high-tech solution to all your age-old sleeping issues. 8 Sleep's Pod 3 cover slips right over your mattress, bringing heat and cooling tech that keeps you comfortable and sleeping deeper for a better, more restful night. Did you know that sleep science shows in order to sleep our best, our body temperature has to drop in the early and middle part of sleep and rise in the morning? The 8 Sleep Pod cover will improve your sleep by automatically adjusting your bed's temperature based on your individual needs. The cover is added to any bed like a fitted sheet and allows you and your partner to cool or warm your side of the bed as low as 55 degrees and up to 110 degrees. There's no better way to improve your day-to-day -day life than with better sleep. And the easiest way to do that is with the 8 Sleep Pod 3. In addition to keeping you at the perfect temperature all night, the pod also tracks your sleep and health metrics. On average, pod users see their sleep quality improve by 32% after just a month on the pod. So go to 8sleep.com slash chatsports and get $200 off plus free shipping on the pod cover by 8sleep. Start the new year right and invest in the rest you deserve with the 8sleep pod. Links in the comments and the description of today's show. Some more thoughts here on the Jordan Lewis re-signing with the uh, move by the Dallas Cowboys. Took him four days to make a re-sign. It wasn't a long snapper. 
uh, that is longer than they normally have to wait. Um, I, I'm going to, you know, we saw Leighton Vandross get about $4 million last year, still waiting on his official re retirement. Uh, in terms of the salary cap impact, depending on what Lewis gets, basically chop off $1 million since you're already above 51 men on your roster. So the top 51 rule uh, you know, doesn't really apply from that perspective. It does apply, so you're saving the, the guy you're bumping off that list there. I, I have no complaints about this. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not a home run move, but it is something. So I'll give my one-word reaction here to the re-signing of Jordan Lewis momentarily. What is your one-word reaction? Go ahead and sound off for me in the comment section of today's show. My one word is, I don't know, nickel? I don't know, solid? Depth, good even. My multi-word action is not enough. You can't, again, the, the, the overall issue I've had for a very long time with this Cowboys organization is this. The individual moves are fine, you know? Nothing to be, you can't really be mad about a cheap one-year deal. There's no long-term downside. It's not going to hurt you, but it also can't be all you do. If your plan is to win games right now, you need to do more than just Eric Kendricks and Jordan Lewis. If you want to make it further than what you did at the disastrous playoff game last year. If, if your goal is to rebuild, then why are you bringing back Jordan Lewis? I, I, think, I think this team's plan is status quo. And I kind of hate that as a plan. But, if I'm, but I don't want to punt on this year because I'm a 12-win team. I can't punt on that. I'll, I will bemoan the fact they are not more aggressive, and I will say re-signing Jordan Lewis is a pretty solid move, even if it's certainly not enough uh, to make me happy as a Cowboys fan. At least I'm not as mad as I was. I still think the clown thumbnail worked, by the way. I think the clown show thumbnail is what finally drove this organization to start making some moves. You got Jordan Lewis back. You have a linebacker. You still need like five more moves of starting-ish caliber players before I start to feel good, though, and not just okay, before I start to feel good about this Cowboys free agency class in 2024. So one word reaction to Jordan Lewis. Then we got a lot of supers to get to here, which I appreciate, guys. Kind of, uh, it, I, I should, probably should have mentioned this. It's kind of a miracle Jordan Lewis came back and is playing football. But by the way, like his his foot injury was a dis disaster. Like there there was there was a point that like we don't know if you're ever going to be able to play football again. And he came back and was basically playing pretty pretty good overall, uh, which was kind of kind of crazy uh, from that perspective. Some one words I see, yes, okay, eh, solid, good, yippee, something, something's a good one. I should have mentioned that one. Finally, fine, trash, liability, feet, foot is actually, is actually probably a decent one, frankly. Um, something, yippee, finally, uh, cool, I eat, anything, trash, more, smart, list frank, also going... It wasn't even just a, that, that dreaded Liz Frank injury. It was worse. I mean, it, it was, it was a, a, a tear a, and a, a strain and, a, and a, a break and a fracture all in one. It was a nightmare foot injury. He'll probably be even better this year coming back from, the, from another year of injuries there. So, All right, super chats that have come in here from Drew, $5 with all the one-year deals. If we don't win the Super Bowl, are the Cowboys blowing up the roster and resetting? They'll have the flexibility to, which is kind of like my issue, right? You're doing one-year deals with a team, and I would argue more importantly, coaching staff that we know isn't good enough. So why are you doing it now? So why aren't you doing that rebuild now? And if you're going to try to keep some of your core pieces around, shouldn't you lock those guys up? And will Jerry ever rebuild? Like that, that's the one thing I think Jerry has influence on. He doesn't want to have a rebuild process. So you don't have time to you don't have time for it. You know? CJ, Dak's only an all-pro against under 500 teams. 
but again, here's the thing, it's just not true. As it turns out, folks, all quarterbacks play better against bad against worse teams and not as good against better teams. There's not like some drastic statistical outlier of that for Dak. Fairly normal levels there. And like also, other quarterbacks play bad teams too. It's like the Cowboys had the world's easiest schedule, like they're playing a bunch of FCS schools. You know? It's not, it's not like those, some of those Boise teams beating up on Wyoming every year. It's the NFL. Do, you, do I want and need more results out of the entire team in the biggest games? Absolutely. It's not, it's not just a quarterback thing, though. Joshua, O-line and running back plans. Good question. Uh, sign a veteran for the cheap, maybe two at running back. Definitely draft somebody. I suspect offensive line is... To maybe sign a veteran swing tackle, maybe, and draft. Draft. Tyler, Dak gets too much hate. I think that's why I haven't gotten the deal done. J J Jerry Jones worried about the media not liking him. I'll be honest, I don't, I don't buy it. Jerry didn't care. Like Jerry, Jerry, Jerry will get mad at the media for not liking him, but. We also complain constantly, and Jerry doesn't care. You know? So I, I don't know if I buy that one. Daniel, I owe a shot to. Cheers to you, Daniel. I'll make sure I don't get the, the, the super chat cut off here. It's kind of cutting me off a little bit on the YouTube side. Realistically speaking, you go to college, graduate with a four-year STEM degree. With no job prospects and broke, does that sound like you won in life? That's how Dak seasons have gone with no conference title. Job interview equals no job. I get what you're going for. I think it's extreme, though. Because if, if that's what happens, then what's like Daniel Jones? And does that mean 2% of college graduates get a job? So the analogy's not quite right for me. Like If I'm sick with, with, with that analogy... You, you go to college, you get the four-year STEM degree, uh, you go to grad school, so you've paid a lot of money for it, right? You have a job, but it's not the job you thought you were going to end up getting. Like, you're, you're paying off all your bills, you're saving money, but you're not that, that rich, famous doctor. Like that's, that's the analogy I would go for. I, I get what you're going for, Daniel. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, Winning 12 games, being a playoff team. If we're putting that on the scale, this team remains a top 10 team. That's not good enough. I need to be a top four team for once in the past, frankly, 28 years. And I think, I think again, we're, in the end, everything kind of gets put on the shoulders of the quarterback. That that's how this job goes. I get it. Um, you know, they, they blame the doctor if the medicine doesn't work for you, you know? And stick with that analogy. That's actually, I actually like that one a lot there. Um, I don't think it's, but it's not, it's not quite one-to-one -one for me. But I do get what you're going for. Um, so cheers to you, Daniel. I appreciate that. Chris B., Jerry won't be here for a rebuild with this front office type. Again, I don't, I, don't, I agree. I don't think they want to go down that right. Ecuador man, my fave. Jerry doesn't have time. It's been 28 years. That's part of the issue is that, he doesn't, this organization, Stephen Falls in the same bucket, they don't ever want to waste a year. They would rather win 10 to 12 games every year, see what happens in the, the playoffs, than boost their chances at a title and have to find a way to rebuild for a year or even just two. Like I, I don't think they I don't think they ever want to be bad. They are perfectly content being good. They won't they won't risk the bad for the great though. And that's a little frustrating. Because they, they just tend to play everything down the middle. And they're not quite good enough at it. So Gray Jordan Lewis resigning for me with the Dallas Cowboys. It is the pin poll. On today's video, A, B, C, D, or F, 
I'm going to sip some more water here. Grade that re-signing. I'll give some shout-outs, too, momentarily. I'm going to think we're good on the rumors cut. I really can't believe that that happened while I was ranting. You've been ranting for four days. And Fine, then, finally get to you, bud. As soon as I start ranting about it, because I'm not, like, emotionally, like, entrenched in Dallas Cowboys. Like, I want the team to be good because we cover the team. But as soon as it starts pissing me off, that's when something happens, at least. Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> uh, I kind of tweaked some of the, the notes I had for the, uh, the doc on the top free agents left. But let's get ready for the Q&A here. And we'll... We'll, we'll go Q&A, recap any news, other stuff, get you guys' thoughts and comments, et cetera. Um, and we'll do the top free agents. Then we'll do that rumors cut, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll call, it a, call it a live show. Barring more news, maybe we should go on a rant again. Uh, correct. I, I went and took that one off. We got, we got the extra cut of that. So. so grade that re-signing. A, B, C, D, or F. B, 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 B. It's all B's in there. That feels about right to me. A B feels about right. Um, you know, I, I, I don't think you needed to um, really pursue that path over the top uh, from that perspective. So uh, Chris B has a quick super chat, which we will get to, by the way, as, as part of the, the final part of today's show. We'll discuss it. The... The Dak lawsuit drama stuff. In a word, messy, maybe is the best way to describe it. Um, a, I think the number one thing is you always just have to let the legal and the court system play itself out. Like, I don't think rushing to judgment either way is ever a good idea, with some exceptions. Like, you know, when it's on film, like, okay, you know, at that point, it, but that's also not rushing to judgment. Like, we, we've heard from... Dax lawyers, if you don't know what happened here, by the way, um, a couple days ago, was it yesterday, two days ago? I don't remember what day it was. It all blends together. Uh, Dax sues a woman who all allegedly uh, tried to extort him for $100 million over a sexual assault claim from 2017. Uh, and the police are now both in, uh, investigating both claims. Like, did that happen? And A... Slash B, you know, was this an extortion claim? Now, frankly, both are kind of hard to prove, absence of evidence. Um, and this, this could very well just be one of those things of like, he said, she, she said, police say, we got nothing for you, you know, go about your business. Um, I believe, by the way, uh, this is for the Dallas Morning News reporting, the civil statute of limitations is, is five years. So we're actually past that. So she wouldn't be able to actually sue him. Um, you know, I, I think some of the, I think the handling from 105.3, the fan, wasn't very great. Um, I, I, I don't think you can just allow the, A, the defensory is not ever supposed to do this, by the way. The defensory is not supposed to go up there and like just rant and rave and, and make claims. It's not normally, you don't normally see that. And you, even, even the Deshaun case, it wasn't quite like that. Um, it's also just, just a lot of bad looks across the board, right? Like, that's the flagship station of the Cowboys. They, they wouldn't do it for Jerry's accusers. They're going to do it for Dak's accusers. It's kind of weird. Like, and then they've also got the allegedly caught the lawyer in 5K saying, uh, or, uh, and screenshots from his Facebook page saying he's a Cowboys fan that hates Dak. Like, that's not a good look at all. Kind of can't. And the, the radio host that's doing it is the one that wished Dak would get hurt. Like, it just, it just didn't look very good. It just didn't look good. Um, it's all a mess. I, I will not cast judgment on anybody involved. I want to make that clear because that's a bad way of going about doing business. I, I would say that the, the overall reaction to it where most of the response, like on the social media posts, were just people making jokes, A, is not a good look either. Messy. B, kind of, I think, tells you how people took it. Like they, they, like, they just, like, didn't believe it. They're like, it was not like, wow, what a bad guy. It was like, ah, is, is it for the, for the Cowboys playoff games? Like, that, that was the response. It was not a very, it was not a very, like, they didn't take it seriously. 
um, from that perspective. And I also think that, in general, I don't think the first response should be, I'm not going to tell the police about this. I'm going to send a letter to his college email address and ask for $100 million. I, I, I just, I, that's not how you build the credibility. Not to dismiss it altogether. That's not what I'm trying to do. I, I am trying to both sides it here. It's not, not the way I would have gone about doing it. In the end, it's just, it's just messy and ugly. And I've seen, I've seen wild like, claims of the Cowboys planted it. Because that, that, that's, that's how unbelievable it was for, for some people. Yeah, ask anybody around the world. Everyone thinks Dak's the, the best guy. So it would be very out of character. Walter Payton, man of the year. Doesn't happen very often, right? So wasn't exactly a quick thought, but that is, that is uh, I guess, some thoughts uh, on that front uh, overall. Let's get to the mailbag then. Hashtag Cowboys or Super Chat to get on the show. First is a super thanks on today's mailbag from my guy CJ DeYoung. I was the 69th like on this video, Tom. Thanks, he also said in there. Well, like the video then, just like CJ DeYoung did, and let me know if you were the 69th like on today's video. If you wish the Cowboys had made some more free agent signings, like today's video for me right now. Also from CJ DeYoung, one of our most consistent super thinkers and super chatters, by the way. What do you mean the Cowboys haven't made any moves? Jerry's even made plenty. Someone drove them on their yacht from Texas to Cabo. She's cut them some slack. Uh, I Actual answer, uh, bachelorette party involving the Jones family, not the Jones boys, but like their soon-to-be granddaughter-in-law. I think that's proper terminology there, uh, for Jerry at least. Had their bachelorette party. J uh, Steven was at South by Southwest on Monday. And they did the, uh, the Professional Bull Riders Welcome Media event with Kid Rock on Wednesday, or on, on Thursday. Joke of a franchise. From Wes, now can we bully them into getting the DAC deal done? This was after I, I said I wanted to bully the Cowboys with the, with the clown uh, thumbnail, and it worked. It's a lot of things I'd love to bully them into. Uh, they've also kind of like screwed up and missed their window on maximizing their, their free agency money. Very frustrating to me. From Tony, Tom, I think we need to sign Parsons and Lamb is why we can't sign anybody. And Dax contract is a, big, is a big problem. Thanks. They have chosen to make the Dak contract a big problem. They could restructure or extend and save money and be aggressive. They will tell you, ah, we, you know, Micah Parsons is a big deal. CeeDee Lamb is a big deal for us. And that's true. Every other franchise has big deals. Every, everyone has them, unless they are absolutely rebuilding. And all of those teams still do more stuff than vet men signings and a veteran free agent linebacker. So it is an excuse, and there was one they will use for Micah and Lamb. They will say how worried they are about the 2025 cap when they've got $90 million, give or take, in salary cap space. It's an excuse, not a reason. Zeno, we all know that Jerry Jones isn't going to go all in. Last year, he uh, tried to trade it for Stephon Gilmore. Brandon Cook said, yep, that's all in. Most teams' normal moves are basically all in, and not extending Dak Prescott yet is ridiculous. Hate Dak or not, he is your best option at quarterback right now. This, this is where I am at, by the way. What is your goal? Do you want to win games in now, the next two, three, four, five years, whatever that number ends up being, or do you want to start your rebuild? Whatever your answer is, it's either then, okay, pay Dak, because you're, you're, you're not actually going to get better in the near future. You can start the rebuild and try to get better. That's fine. Have a plan. Pin comment on today's video. I'm sure will not elicit arguments as it always does. Rank Dak Prescott for me among NFL quarterbacks. Sound off in the comment section right now. From Mr. Man, Tom, do you think having the draft and free agency would, be, would have had a better outcome for the Cowboys than having free agency than the draft? I think that would probably be better for them. I think it, they would go BPA and then fill their needs. Now, it might be better for everybody involved. I think it would actually hurt the free agents a little bit. And, and that's why the NFL PLX free agency first. And that's, that's fine, I suppose. Um, but I think it would probably benefit the Cowboys. From Blank, could you please make me a Jones Ask Clowns t-shirt? I'll be the first buyer. Uh, all those t-shirts we post on the YouTube side, those are all like 
they have to pass like a censorship thing. I don't know if that one would pass. I'll try. It, it probably would, would, not, would not pass. Lawrence Jewell. I don't know if it's McCarthy or the Jerry slash Steven Zoo that Schultz was talking about. I think players just don't want to play for Dallas anymore. Thoughts? Dallas doesn't win the tiebreakers. Like when it comes to free agency, those guys are there because they want to get paid. And when you're not winning championships like the, the Chiefs are, you know, would you rather play for $5 million with the Chiefs or $5 million with, with Dallas? The Chiefs, right? Four and a half of the Chiefs? Five million for Dallas. Maybe it's four and a half. You don't get those tiebreakers anymore. And the Jones boys still believe they're the benefits that come for playing for the star mean they should take less, even their own guys. And that's why they're not the greatest at contract negotiation. Richard Robinson, $10. I will put him, by the way, into our, uh, our uh, mini helmet raffle end of the month here. Barkley, Eckler, Jacobs off the market. Thoughts on picking up Aaron Jones and stuff being a Cowboys killer. Look, when super chats come, super thanks come in, excuse me, we will always get to them. Obviously, this one came in a little bit after those moves happened. I would have interested in Jones, though, but they were not going to pay $7 million. Caden, thoughts on Braden, or Braylon, excuse me, Allen. That is the Wisconsin running back. I think you have to find a way to add, to add a back in the draft. If you sign A.J. Dillon, you know, Braylon Allen doesn't make much sense for you because that's, you know, that's two power backs. I need some juice there. You know, if you go with a cheaper third down back, maybe you bring back Dowdle and Edwards Lair and let those two guys comp compete or McKinnon or whatever or J.K. Dobbins, whatever. Um, maybe that makes sense then. And then Brett Allen could be your power back. I'm down with him in the third round, though, just as a general, general signing. From Chip Mayhew, OG, into the raffle, too. If Jerry doesn't have much time left, why do he and Steven drag their feet every offseason? I love my Cowboys, but he's, I'm so disinterested 11 6 on a first round bounce. Love you always, Tom, the number one channel. I completely get this, Chip. Uh, the answer is they don't have much time left to not be a contender. And it's, they are, their goal is not to risk it all for a championship. They're not the Eagles. There's, no, there's still no desperation for them. They are very happy being an 11-win team and seeing if they get lucky come postseason time. That, that's a great outcome for them. I don't agree with it, but that is their outcome. At that, they, they, they want to be good every year. They want to be good every single year. And they do a good job of doing that. They're not good enough. Landon, Debo Samuel trade for the Cowboys. Um, I would be surprised if Dallas did it because they got to move something good to get him. And who knows what they have that's actually available to that's something good. Like, I don't think they're going to move their first round pick for him. I do think that Debo Samuel is obtainable, though, uh, for, for the right price. Like, I don't think he's untouchable in San Francisco. It'd be a fun fit. I think the contract and injury concerns are, would very much turn the Dallas Cowboys off of that. Um, but I do think a Debo trade is not as outlandish as it would have been like last year. I just don't know if Dallas ends up being the right fit for him. So when it comes to free agency, the draft, or trades, name a player who you want to add this offseason. Sound off for me in the comments section. Jack Johnson, Cowboys need to keep signing and re-signing serviceable players so we don't draft horny. Take BPA. First off, is, is, this, is this not to be trite? Mike White, Berger, and Blitz's uh, burner account here? That's his line. Uh, it's a hilarious line, by the way. Um, but you're also right. Fill your needs. Can't be out there going, oh, we need a defensive tackle and a running back and another linebacker and a third corner, fourth corner. And, and an off a tackle and a center. Got to fill those needs. Now, you can do it cheaply, but ugh, then you're kind of in the same boat every year. And you, you're kind of out of, you're getting thin on options at this stage. Chris B says, give me J.K. Dobbins out of what's left. Let's gamble. How about Dobbins and Dowdle are back? And you still draft somebody in the third round. And then if someone isn't there for you, 
I bet there will be a guy unsigned post-draft. Maybe he can wait for Dobbins then even. I'm not sure what his status is coming off the Achilles tear. Um, but the upside of the available free agent backs, J.K. Dobbins is definitely the best one. From Wes, we already know the Jones boys won't make a splash. Yeah. I think Eric Kendricks is about as splashy as we'll get uh, this offseason. Um, or at least in free agency. I mean, maybe the first round pick will be splashier, but that's everyone gets one of those unless you trade it away. So, from Trevor, is the Dak story the Cowboys plan to drive down the, his his cost? I think you meant. I I just I can't get in on that that conspiracy theory. Like, didn't that hurt the Cowboys more in the end? Like, I, I think if there's the I think if if there is the in theory collusion against Dak, it's probably not from the Cowboys organization, and it's probably from, you know, someone who would more benefit directly from it, you know. I'm not saying that's the case either, to be clear. I'm not, I, I will both sides it and not cast blame or accusations or whatever. I just, I, I just, I, I can't get on board believing that, you know. I just, that, it just doesn't, doesn't pass the, the smell test for me. The eye test, whatever you want to call it. We will have Cowboys news and rumors updates for you as well. Hit that sub button so you don't miss out. From Merlin the Wizard, how about that? Uh, if we, the reality is this, if we let that go, high chance turn to the Browns. Other teams where we are drafting a quarterback in the first round multiple times, LOL. Hashtag Cowboys, holla if you feel me, y'all, L LMAO. That is, the, that is the downside, and I don't want to go back to the Quincy Carter, Chad Hutchinson, Vinny Testaverde, Drew Henson, uh, Clint Stoner, Ryan Leaf era. You know, that was only like four or five years. It felt so much longer than that. That scares me. You know, I, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to end up with, you know, that jersey of all these different starting quarterback names. I want more than what I have now, but my other fear is because this Cowboys team doesn't want to lose, they won't bottom out to get that top five pick at, at quarterback. And they'll keep trying different stopgap options. That's my fear. From Jotman, odds you would give the Cowboys uh, to move up and get a little late first or some pick in the second round since they're asleep during free agency. Low. Um, I, I think they want their premium picks next year. Now, maybe they could find a way to trade down in round one and then get some extra assets. Like I, I, In general, in the, in the Sims, it's the Sims. You know how those tend to go. I like moving down and then up. I think you maximize your assets a little bit better. Um, but that's, everyone kind of feels that way, so it's much easier said than done. From Roman Wolf Gaming, Chase Young needs to be signed. Why not? Might be a Panther. Uh, we'll have a, a better chance to be the, the guy. Also, you know, I think sometimes his efforts and, and desire to go rogue and not follow the game plan and, and like stay in his lane I think can, can rub some teams the wrong way. It definitely did in, in Washington. It, I mean, you, could, you saw some of those run-stopping clips. He was just out there jogging. That run, I think, rubbed people the wrong way from the Niners. They traded a third for him and had no desire to bring him back. Slight red flag there. Chip Mayhew OG. When Steven talked about 36 wins over the past three years, and they weren't serious about winning, also I would loathe a first round back. Hashtag all out. Uh, I would not worry that much about a round one back. I think that you have bigger needs. And there's not there's no like Bijan or Gibbs even worth taking in round one. You know, Benson or Brooks might still be there for you on day two. So I I, I would hate it as well. I'm not worried about it happening though. If we did not get to your question, hit me up on Twitter at what going downy. DMs are open. If I don't reply immediately. My apologies, but I will uh, eventually get around to it. All right, what is your one-word reaction to the Jordan Lewis signing? I'm going to get the, uh, the, the cut out on Twitter here, Chris, if you want to bring yourself on and, and give some shout-outs here uh, as well. Uh, I'll trace thanks. Uh, I'll tweet. Chris, take it away. What's your one-word reaction? Let me know in the comments. Nice, good. Solid, <clears throat> decent, needed, 
unmoved. More. I like that one. Got to do more than just that. I know we're talking about, you know, you got to re-sign your own guys, but, I mean, he's still not the most important guy you need to re-sign or extend. Agreed. Mediocre, solid, insurance. It's a start. Something is always a good one. Cheapest is a good one, too. Yeah. Not Gilly. <laughs> not, that's not Gilmore. Bare minimum. Cabbage. Okay. Snooze. Typical. Meh. Goofy. Why? Oh, I did realize I'm not getting a push on that. Minimal. Oh, well. At least it's something. CB4. <laughs> Juice. Yeah, I think I, right as right as Tom said, you know, he's coming back. Jordan Lewis, we re-signed him. I was like, yeah, okay, but not that. I'm just trying to like discredit, you know, them trying to make a move or doing something. It's just, it's, it's not a splash. It's like bottom of the totem pole of like most important things you should be worrying about right now. I think it's it, it doesn't move the needle in a major way. It I, again, it's it, it, it's it, it's the individual move versus the big picture. You know? Individual move, it's good. Big picture, okay, but. Yeah. There's, there's still a, a lot more to, to go there. Let me get this on Facebook. There's so many. I mean, there's just so many things. You can restructure, make more cap space. Could have easily done things. Could have easily done things. But so be it. I see a couple boycotts in there as well. Yell at Jerry during the game. Do the Cowboys have in their boxes, is it like glassed off or is it open? Do you know? I think there's some of both. Okay. I was just thinking, I, you know. I'm pretty sure there's like, depends on where you're sitting, I think. People were like yelling at Mark Davis where he could hear I'm not. I'm not, I'm not rich <laughs> enough to sit in the boxes. Yeah. <laughs> Got another super chat coming in here. Get to that one, then we'll move to our uh, top free agents left. I'll make sure I haven't missed anything here. Make sure I'm not like not pulling names. I need to be pulling names off of you know, <laughs> basically, what I'm doing here. All right, uh, crispy. Need another rant, another rant vid. So they signed someone, Tom. Just did. It has to be organic, you know. Um, it's got to be organic. We'll see. Come back. Come back in a few days, or may maybe tomorrow. All I know is, like, I am. I am anxious about. I'm anxiously awaiting Tyron Smith. Decision. My concern is he's a Jet. Very worried about that one. The Jets are making moves too. Because the, the Jets have to win now or they're all going to get fired. Like this, like the Jets, this is their year. Like, they don't win this year. You know, Rodgers, he, he might be the vice president of the United States. Uh, <laughs> uh, front office is going to get canned because Joe Douglas has survived like three years in a row. They need, uh, you know, Rodgers is old. There's no quarterback behind him, and it's good, that's good. Like, it is now or never for New York. For that regime. That's also why the Cowboys don't feel that way. It's not now or never for this regime. It's now or the next 25 years. For Steven, 30 years, 40 years. Who knows? Maybe not 40. No urgency. And a bit of urgency is a good thing, by the way. All right, so Chris, let's go to our um, top free agents left here. You can just come open to me full screen to start. I don't know if we have it. I don't probably didn't build an L3 for it. Um, but you can just do sub on it. Just do sub and I'll, and I'll mention it and tell it what it is. Uh, beer cheers for 500 likes. We will run through some of the top available free agents here. Well, Daniel's $20 super chat first.
The fact is R-E-B-U-I-L-E-D, rebuild. It feels good to be winners. What does that mean? Brag around how we won the division but never make it to a conference, first round ex exit. Your definition of winning is mediocrity. Chicken slap. I don't, I've never seen that phrase before. Also, by the way, the, the chicken emoji on the graphics looks way cooler than it does on my YouTube page. The chicken's looking at us. That looks awesome. That looks really cool. Uh, first off, bottoms up to you, Daniel. Cheers. Um, look, that's, if we move the goalposts, which I think is okay doing this year, actually, to the playoff caliber teams, then yes, what the Cowboys have done is mediocre. They, they are a mediocre playoff team, right? At times, even a bad playoff team. But by putting the playoff qualifier on there, I think we're, we're, we're kind of taking out too many of the available options, you know? It's like, that man is the slowest sub-4-5 40-yard dash I've ever seen. Still sub-4-5, though, you know? That's still really fast. That's the nicer version than, you know, the, 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 not, the not nice one that uh, typically goes around there. Um, so if you want to rebuild, I get it. You have to do it right, though, and this is not the right way to go about doing a rebuild. They're, like, still kind of trying to win games this year when we know it's going to be maybe win the division first round exit. Like, that's what this team is trending towards again, barring surprising performances from a lot of different players on your roster that we didn't see last year at all, when the team might be better on paper last year than it was this year. So if we put the playoff qualifier, yeah, mediocre. I, this is a good football team. They are not good enough. And I, I wish they weren't content enough to be a good team. Because my concern is a rebuild effort is going to be, you know, you do exactly what you did this past year. You win 10-ish games, 11 games. You're picking in the 20s again. You lose Dak for a future third-round comp pick. You give Trey Lance a shot. It's not that great. You win seven games, maybe six games, because you still have some talent on this roster, by the way. You're still not in you know, draft pick range of getting the top quarterback, and you love your picks so much you don't want to move up, and then you actually get stuck in mediocrity. You get stuck being the Falcons from the past couple of years, but, you don't ever want to, but you're not going to find a franchise quarterback via free agency the same way you did. Not, probably not going to be as good. You're not ever going to be drafting high enough to get that early pick to, to really gamble on that guy and you just kind of make the exact same mistake you did before you lucked into Tony Romo where you're trying this guy and trying that guy and it's just you never really commit one way or the other uh the way you did before by the way Jordan Lewis just posted the uh Vince Carter I got one more in me <laughs> yeah photo <laughs> so that that's my concern is the, the plan can be better plan can be be better a rebuild plan can work for this team. Just, I don't trust them to implement it, you know? All right, Roman Wolf Gaming, we'll get to your super chat here along with, uh, oh, uh, Daniel's got a $5. Uh, uh, let's, let's go to Roman Wolf and Daniel here because Daniel's, Daniel's clarifying on that front there. Um, Roman Wolf Gaming, Tom, will you please swipe your card and buy Cowboys? Card's getting declined. You know, maybe what I'll do is I, is I, is I will fit, I'll, I'll put like that little like camera on, my, on the button and go, go up to the bank and go, I would like a loan for $10 billion to buy the Dallas Cowboys and see what the bank says in response to me. I wonder if the response is, sir, please leave. Uh, Daniel, I ran out of space to say rubber chicken slap. Where is rubber chicken to slap you? <laughs> Rebuild takes five years in advance to see, to, uh, to see college prospects. You're always scouting. Um, and even the quarterback stuff, we've seen guys, you know, jump from one or two years. Like, Caleb Williams played three years. Drake Smith. I don't know if you need five to rebuild. Uh, I think you can do it in a shorter time frame. I think you can do it even quickly to an extent. You know? I think you can build your foundation in, re in year one, spend some money in free agency entering year two, and draft that quarterback in year two and with an early, early round pick. And then, you know, have your growth year, year three. You're not wasting a year of that cheap quarterback contract. I think that that's a plan. Do I trust the Cowboys to implement it? 
No, I don't think they do. You know, we used to have a, a we by the, maybe Dino's a little this. We used to have a rubber chicken in the office to slap people with. We don't have it anymore. It, it kind of, it, it, uh, it had been destroyed at one point. Someone, someone cut it up uh, as part of a super chat thing, and it, it's gone now. Uh, so we, we, don't, we don't have the rubber chicken anymore. It's funny as hell, Daniel. Uh, I appreciate that. From Wes, uh, changes that Charlotte Jones saves this team. Something new couldn't hurt. Uh, what, what was the TV series? Secession. Stephen Jones is what's-his-face going, I'm the eldest boy. Like that's, that's who Stephen Jones is. And then Charlotte's what's-her-face. Um, I think that scenario kind of exists. I, don't, I, I forget how. I never really got into Secession. I know what's-his-face what's his came out on top somehow. I don't know who that is in this scenario, but it exists. So uh, I, I think just that, – that, that was going to be my, my next social media post of – uh, if the Cowboys hadn't done anything last night, I would have edited Steven Jones' face onto that guy going, I'm the eldest boy, and posted that. I'll save that one in the back pocket for a later time. Because I, I, did, I did fire off, the, 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 I did another clown one this morning too. It was, and then they signed Jordan Lewis. You know what? Maybe I should do it again. I, 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 will, do, I, I, I will do it tonight or tomorrow. Uh, I'll do, I will do another clown photo and say, every time I post a clown photo, they sign somebody. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Uh, Blake, we'll get to your super chat here uh, in a little bit here, but I do want to break down some of the top free agents out there uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. Wave one, two, and I think mostly three are done. So we're taking a look at the top free agents left for the Dallas Cowboys to spend that cheap, cheap $1 million deal they love to do. We begin with A.J. Dillon, who has been a very linked name to Dallas and was one of the few names to actually have rumors around him uh, for the Dallas Cowboys. Dillon is a power back. In short yardage, he does a very good job. He's very efficient in that role. He's also extremely limited. He's not going to give you big plays, not going to give you explosive options. He was less efficient than Ezekiel Elliott was last year in terms of average per carry, his success rate was actually a little bit higher. He's younger. I think you feel better about his, you know, being better in 2024, but you still need a speed back in a pretty big way if you were to add A.J. Dillon. J.K. Dobbins is next up here, and there's no bigger upside play of the available free agents than J.K. Dobbins. The issue is he's barely played football the past three years. One game, eight games, zero games. When he has been out there, he's been explosive. But after a torn ACL and a torn Achilles, you have no idea what he's really going to offer you in 2024. He is a vet minimums contract signing that with incentives if you want. And it's, hey, if something great happens, cool. But you can't bank on him. Now, Dalvin Cook has linked his way to the Cowboys by following some Cowboys content creators, not me. He also didn't block me, so maybe all my Dalvin Cook tweets, uh, didn't, he didn't see those. Uh, and liking his tweets about the Cowboys. He was bad last year, though. Like, I had warned everyone, like, he's not the same player. He might fall apart. Don't go after him. Don't go after him. And then he was even worse than I thought he was going to be. And typically, as backs age, they don't suddenly get better after regressing. That's a no from me, dog. Now, we will have Cowboys videos for you when they make more moves. They, they still have to, plus, you know, the draft stuff that they actually will do things in. Hit that sub button so you don't miss out. YouTube.com slash at Cowboys TV. A Boise State boy. We know how much the Cowboys love those players. Alexander Madison is next up here. 3.9 yards per carry, though, is very much replacement level production, if a bit below replacement level production. Uh, cut by the Vikings. Wouldn't impact that this comp pick formula that the Cowboys covet so much. They've got two fives and a six as of now. Um, but he could be your early down back. You still need help, though. Third down back option, Clyde Edwards Alaire, former first round pick. Maybe wasn't a great scheme fit in Kansas City. Um, you're banking on 2020 results or something closer to it, or maybe 2021, but he was also not very good in 2023. That's why all these guys are, are pretty much vet men signings. 
Now, Jared McKinnon, who, by the way, played with Mike Zimmer in, in Minnesota briefly, uh, does stand out as another third down back option, missed some time due to injuries. What you could do is, like, have Jarek McKinnon and, like, Deuce Vaughn, you know, compete for a role uh, as a third down back. Maybe that could make some sense if McKinnon wants to sign that veteran salary benefit thing the Cowboys love so much. So name a free agent who you guys want to sign. It's the pinned comment on today's video. The ad comes here on YouTube. Take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Deonta Foreman is next up, and, and look, he has shown promise in years past in a smaller role. I think this might be a player that me and other media and fans are higher on in the NFL because he's never really gotten the chance. But if you want that like early down back and draft a speedy guy to pair with him, I think Foreman might be the best of the available options out there. I do have to put Zeke on here. Uh, I don't want to go down this path. You know, I don't, I'd take him over Dalvin Cook pretty easily. My concern here is that if you bring Zeke back, you know, the Joneses are going to force the ball into his hands. Uh, bring him back on a one-day contract to a tire, whenever that ends up being. But I think there is a different player with ties. The organization was actually better than what we have. Could get at this stage in Zeke. He's not going to get any better. The numbers continue to drop off. I, I think that that, that race is, has been run. But I do believe in democracy. So would you bring back Ezekiel Elliott? Why for yes and for no. We will mention some Cowboys players on this list. Enrico Dowdle was just as efficient, if not more so, in pretty much every metric you're angling, even the short yardage stuff, than Ezekiel Elliott was this past season. And I think he offers you a little bit more juice than Zeke does at this stage. You also can't enter week one with Dowdle as RB1. So you definitely need to get some more help there at the running back position. Let's go to defensive tackle now. Jonathan Hankins. The DT market in general has been a wild one. Uh, it has been a very aggressively moving market with a lot of players signing, etc. Hankins is among the better, if not the best, for this team at least, nose guard unsigned. Calais Campbell is kind of in that journeyman, uh, you know, searching for a ring phase as, as best as, as possible. Uh, played pretty well for the Falcons. Could do some base defensive end DT stuff for you, give you some size. He got paid a lot last year from Atlanta. Might be looking for something similar this offseason. Tyre Tarts will visit with the Bengals, by the way. Keep an eye out for that one. Uh, the body type says he's not a great run stopper, but he actually is a very good one there. Uh, weird year in Tennessee. Kind of got himself cut with complaining and stuff there. But I think with your nose guard options, it gets real thin real quick. So you should explore Tart if this team wants to make the calls to others as opposed to others calling them. Puna Ford didn't play a ton last year. He's a nose guard option. Um, stands out as, as a Texas guy and Probably wouldn't be that expensive either. John Jenkins, I believe, is going to be with the Dolphins, uh, by the way. Had a lot of tackles for the Raiders. Kind of a shockingly uh, large amount there for a nose guard. Big boy in the middle, right? You want that veteran nose guard. You don't bring back Hankins. You know, maybe Jenkins stands out as a fit. If you haven't already, you know, we're like seven minutes into the show. You clearly like what we're doing. So hit that sub button for more free Dallas Cowboys YouTube videos every single day. There will be an update at some point on Tyron Smith. I would really like to find a way to keep him. Um, I would really enjoy getting him onto this roster again for one more year, run it back. Hope you guys didn't get got by that, uh, that, that fake Tyron Smith account. Come on, it was, not, it was obviously not him. Uh, but I'm worried about the Jets going after him. So some swing tackles then that maybe could be stopgap starters. Josh Jones, former earliest round draft pick, did not grade it out very well from PFF, but there was a run blocking thing he was banged up to. I've seen some flashes there. Again, I'm not, I'm setting my expectations low on a lot of these names. Trent Brown's played both left tackle and right tackle. 
The concern here is, I think, I don't know if football character is the right word for it, but he made a lot of disparaging comments about his old coaching staff. And I don't know if you guys have ever hired somebody, um, but when they're out there clearly bad-mouthing their last bosses, that typically doesn't go over well with a potential new boss. I think just, that's just like, uh, that's just a red flag. Whether the player was right or not, they don't normally like that. So his market might be a bit deflated as a result. Now, David Bakhtiari, I don't know if he can play football anymore. Uh, I w I, people will ask about him, so I will mention him. But the medicals might be to be a red, red flag, slash maybe he goes to play with Aaron Rodgers. Maybe he's a, a, uh, is a cabinet member for Aaron Rodgers and the RFK uh, presidential run. Andres Peets. Saints got some guard tackle flexibility, former first-round pick. Again, it's not a great option. Maybe you've heard of him, but the results, the sacks, he kind of got benched at points. It's, I am scraping the barrel here along the offensive line. Kendall Lamb played uh, pretty decently for a Dolphins team that was banged up along the offensive line. Wouldn't mind bringing him back if I could find a way to make that one happen, uh, given, again, just some left-side, right-side flexibility. Connor Williams, the ACL tear is a massive red flag at this stage. However, um, he played really well last year at center, like really good. Uh, maybe the medical makes him wait longer to sign somewhere. That stands out as a, a reunion that could actually make some sense if the penalties stay lower like they were. Outside of one year in Dallas, everyone got big mad. Just saying. Not many guards I like. Uh, Dalton Reisner stands out here. Guy I really wanted last year. I, over, I overvalued him, but he can still start for you. you know, is he better than TJ Bass? Maybe, but you know, it gives a Bass-Hoffman competition at center. Reisner in there at left guard. Let's Bass work as a right guard backup too. I think it can make some sense. Jake Curran is next up here. Not tendered by Seattle. I put him in here because of obvious ties to Mike Solari and Seattle. Now, what do you think is the biggest need for the Dallas Cowboys? Go ahead and so sound off for me in the comment section. Uh, one rule, can't say coach or GM. Got to pick a position. DJ Wanham is next up here. We get to some, a quick, couple quick edges. Um, knows Mike Zimmer very well. The edge market has been quiet. If it continues to drop... Maybe you can find your new number three, number four, Dante Fowler-esque edge at a three to four million dollar price tag. Wanham, I think, might be a little bit more expensive than that, though. It's a Michigan guy, but you'll forget about because he played for the Chiefs already. Uh, Michael Dana has done some nice things in KC. He can do some run-stopping stuff for you as well. Under the radar piece that I think could fit as a backup base end uh, behind Demarcus Lawrence. Yannick Ngakwe, I think, is a perfect number three, number four edge for a team like Dallas. Don't ask him to stop the run a bunch. Just, you know, let him be a pass rusher. Pay him a couple million dollars. Don't have him be a full-time player. His numbers have begun to dip. But I think you can plug him in there as, you know, Sam Williams, ace, and Yannick Ngakwe, B, behind uh, Dante, or behind Micah and Tank Lawrence, and you let him go get sacks. I think that edge veteran sack pursuer makes sense for this team. Manuel Ogba falls in a similar category as some of these guys. Uh, had been linked to Dallas previously. Didn't have his best year in Miami. But if he can sign something and get you five to six sacks for a couple million dollars, that's a pretty good return on your investment. Bud Dupree. You notice a trend here? Veteran aging pass rusher to come basically replace Dante Fowler. That's, that's what I'm aiming for with this particular move. Carl Lawson is a player I've long liked. Now, injuries have sapped him, and he was kind of lost in the sauce to an extent uh, of a deep Jets pass rushing room that is now no longer as deep. Barely played last year. Seven sacks, though, in 2022. Uh, Bengals for a long time there, so there should, in theory, be so, just enough overlap between you know Paul Gunther knowing some guys on that Bengals staff that had Carl Lawson. I think there's enough of a connection that they could at least do some due diligence there. Uh, again, a couple sacks. Uh, maybe this might be a vet minimum deal. I have interest. I don't have many wide receivers on my list. You know, they're, they're going to cut Gallup or trade him, whatever. They'll move on from him. Cedric Wilson offers me special teams value, 
and he can be my wide receiver three to five. That's valuable when I'm paying him what I think would be the vet minimum deal. I am okay to bring back said. Plus, he's the best quarterback in NFL history as well. I have to put him in here. It's Odell Beckham Jr. I don't love it. Uh, you know, the play has not been great. There's obviously no 2022 campaign on there either. Uh, showed some flashes at times with the Ravens. I don't think he's better than Brandon Cooks. I don't think he's better than, than CeeDee Lamb. He'll make some plays for you. The Ravens did not use him uh, in, the, um, in the playoff run that much, as, as maybe the way they should have. So he'll probably get linked at some point. That's how it works. The medicals did not come back very well the last time. I think that's, that's a big-time red flag. So you want Odell Beckham on the Cowboys. OBJ for yes or no BJ for no. The Cowboys have, of course, brought back Jordan Lewis. I would like to go get Stephon Gilmore still. I would like to find a way to retain him on my roster. Uh, veteran corner on the outside, I still think makes sense. Then you don't have to draft somebody at all, even if you don't need to. And you can buy more time for Eric Scott to grow. Patrick Peterson, he knows Mike Zimmer very well. He played some safety, by the way, for the Steelers this past year. Uh, worth mentioning given how long he spent under Mike Zimmer in some previous seasons. Some other names, again, we'll go quickly on these here. Trey White, injury red flags, missed more games than he's played the past three years. Maybe a post-draft signing for somebody. Xavier Howard, cut with a failed physical designation, by the way, red flag there, has shown playmaking ability, had been hypothetically linked to the Cowboys previously. If you don't retain Gilmore, that could be an option as, as a cheap veteran outside piece. Some buy low names here, at least one of them, is Christian Fulton of the Tennessee Titans. Um, did not have a good 2023. This is a buy low rehab uh, candidate and see if Mike Zimmer can fix him. Adoree Jackson has some speed. I think could still do some inside-outside stuff for you. A uh, bit better than some of the other games on this list, but I'm very curious how much he ends up getting from somebody on the open market. Another buy-low option is C.J. Henderson, the former first-round pick. He has really been a disappointment, but Mike Zimmer's a cornerback guy, so maybe they will be able to uh, you know, fix him. Again, this, this should be no more than a vet minimum signing. Justin Simmons, the Broncos safety. I bet he's going to be too expensive, but at least pick up the phone. The Cowboys don't want to pick up the phones, but you can, you can make Simmons fit. I'm only going bigger name at safety, by the way. Quandre Diggs on this list. 95 tackles, one interception, five pass breakups. Uh, he, was, he has shown some signs of decline but he's smart enough to fit in the Mike Zimmer scheme. And you knew I had to make Jamal Adams an option, right? I don't want to because I have safeties who actually are linebackers. Uh, the lack of blitzing that the, the, the team did for him didn't make much sense. He can still help somebody. I just think the Cowboys are in okay enough shape to not go after Jamal Adams. Get to Blake's retirement momentarily. Chris, you know how we were, we've been saying, watch out for the Lions and DJ Reader, he's a lion. Two-year deal up to $27.25 million for DJ Reader, despite coming off a torn quad. So big money for DJ Reader. Um, that's, why, that's why I uh, did not put him on the defensive tackle list. <laughs> kind of figured that one was going to happen. Um, so that's kind of where you're at, you know. Blake, anyway, back to some super chats here. The time to get Tavon Austin back. Darnold MVP. Funny. Uh, remember the web back when uh, Stephen Jones said they're going to get Tavon, uh, Tavon Austin 12, a dozen to two dozen touches? <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, he, by the way, he meant snaps. That's what he meant. He never meant touches. But, you know, he also never clarified it because he just doesn't care. Tyler, sell the team to Elon. Tom is general manager. Just let me be the, be the owner. Just give me the team. All right? That's all I'm asking for. Roman Wolf says, sign Antonio Brown. Screw it. 
<laughs> C-T-E-S-P-N, right? That's, that's what his hashtag is now. Look, look, the man's unhinged, okay? But damn if it's not funny sometimes, okay? Uh, and he does some bad things too, to be clear. I'm not, I'm not advocating, it's not, this is not a t- pro-Antonio Brown channel, um, but there are some funny things in there. Adrian Dyson, $10. I think I need to get caught up here on our Super Chat Tracker. Um, yeah, yeah, Chris is going to help me out here because I didn't put any 10s in there. Uh, last one I had was the Richard Robinson Super Thanks. So I definitely got, let me scroll back here. Make sure I'm not missing any. Obviously, Adrian Dyson. Maybe that's all I missed. Chip Mayhew, that's the one I missed. Chip, and then it's for our signed Drew Pearson mini helmet end of the month raffle. Every $10 gets you in. I uh, think I got a, Yeah. I'm going to give Daniel another one because I see a 10. I don't know if I gave him the 10 or not, so I'm just going to give Because he put in a bunch of points too, so I'm just going to count it. Uh, I see the crying here, but most of McCarthy gone. So what? Uh, sense to make it splash this year. And the coach did not want those players next year, i.e. the Broncos. I think at the end, this kind of ties into your core philosophy. What, what, what's your plan? If you think McCarthy's the guy to win, then, you know, why, why wouldn't you go do that? Like, why aren't you trying to help him win? And if, he's, and if you don't think he's the guy to win as, a, as an organization, why is he here? So, again, it, it's the same issue of, like, you're not picking door A or door B, and you keep going into the wall in between them. You know? That's, that's kind of the way, the way I, I view it. From Mark, Kendrick is a great a slight upgrade over Van Der Esch, cheap and knows defense. These are the players we need. Believe we are, as, we are good as is. No improvement needed. A-hole. So that's what he thinks. That the, oh, just JJ thinks that. The, the Jones boys, they don't want to spend for it. I think they're going to get a deal. By the way, it's been like, it's been almost 12 hours, almost 24 hours, and there's no Eric Kendrick contracts details. That means he signed pretty cheaply. Because the, if, the, if the agent wants to get that info out there, they leak it. They leak the up to figure. Look at what I got my, my, my client. Otherwise, it's he's signed. And maybe you get the, the year. Other news, by the way, Ray, Ray McLeod to the Falcons. Kendall Fuller, the Dolphins, two years, $16.5 million. Darnell Grant, but Tyron on the move. Could Makai Becton be a possible replacement, even making a move for Risner at guard? I'd be down with Dalton, uh, sorry, Reisner. I think it's Reisner. I don't even know how to pronounce that anymore. I'm, I'm too tired at this point. It's been live for like 24 hours in like a three-day span. It's been, it's been great. I love it. It's going to be me during day three of the draft. Slurring my words after shots and stuff. Make the, the make Tom P game. It, it will happen. I, I, I can't do it anymore. Um, anyway, Becton like, scares me. I think he might, might be a bangle, by the way, is, is my concern there. From Mark, as mediocre as many of the guys are, we lost. We have no replacements. I guess Jerry Jones thinks comp number five picks will be enough to restock our team. A-hole. That is the concern, right? You still got to sign somebody. You've done three moves. Ah, I kind of the long snapper. You've done two moves. You got to do more. Ecuador man says Zeke back. Why not Terrell Basham and Eddie George? SMH. Well, I think Terrell was Terrell Basham in the league last year. I know the I think the Titans had him, the Bengals had him at one point. Terrell Basham. Oh, he's he's in the UFL. He was with the Bengals for a little bit, by the way. It was Titans and then Bengals in different years. Uh, he, signed, he signed three days ago with the UFL. Cowboys legend in, in the chat, baby. I remember the Eddie George. I remember when Eddie George lost his starter streak because they went shotgun for three straight plays, five wide, and he didn't play, and therefore he didn't get a start. Really dumb. From Mark, most of the guys you mentioned are not as good as what we lost. You don't prove a team with equal or lesser guys to replace who left. Need more Kendricks. I agree. That's the issue. We're four days in. There aren't very many upgrades. You will not upgrade in free agency at running back over Tony Pollard. Just not going to happen. From Justin, more news, by the way. Benito Jones back with the Miami Dolphins. Hilarious character, by the way. Super funny guy. Uh, that, 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 is a, that, that is a country boy through and through. 
Uh, is it possible Dak could get suspended? And uh, would be disappointed if he did not pick back Tyron. Would like to address our needs before the draft. I totally agree. Look, possible, yes. You know, we can, we can do the whole Zeke Elliott stuff again, which, like, at this point, I think we know enough. My. Zeke didn't do it. Like, they had the texts. They, 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 the NFL ignored the own investigator's report suggestion of like, hey, we should do this. And they're like, nah, we're just going to do it. It's fine. Really? Uh, um, since then, the NFL has been uh, much more inclined to not have to make a point. Like, Zeke got the short end of the stick because they messed up the Ray Rice thing so bad, they had to prove how tough they were on domestic violence. Um, if, in theory... And they will let this all play out. I mean, how, look, look how long it took. Uh, it took uh, Devontae Casey a year to get suspended for his DUI. It took Devontae Adams a year and a half for his shove of the cameraman to be announced as not a suspension. Like, I forgot about that even being a thing. So they will let that play out as they should from the legal court system, and we'll see what happens. If it ends up being, you know, police say we cannot prove the, uh, the, the, the blackmail case because we can't prove or disprove the assault accusation, I think it just kind of goes away. Uh, the, 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 be my, what I think would make the, the most sense. And the NFL would probably treat it pretty similarly. Um, again, it's also telling that like the, the, fan, the, the fan reaction, even from beyond Cowboys fans, has been kind of like, let's make jokes about it. Like they, they don't even, I think to, to an extent, I, I think, and again, I'm not trying to be mean or, or cast judgment or whatever, I think like I think going for a hundred million dollars was maybe overplayed the hand a little bit because you see that figure and it's like oh, wait it was seven years ago that uh, that doesn't I think that there's fair or not I think that kind of becomes the the reaction to it. JT a fifty dollar super chat it's beer bong time let's go two of them two for one I got it Chris you're good two beer bongs coming at you says, with the commander signing Wagner, I see that he really would have signed for the right money. Got to love that pie. Of that note, by the way, JT, we know whose fault it was the Cowboys weren't signing linebackers under Dan Quinn, right? Dan Quinn joins the commanders. They have a first-round pick in Jamin Davis at linebacker. Wasn't that great, but still. And his answer was, I'm going to sign two starters. I think he did value linebackers. Front office wouldn't pay for him. I will answer the second half of this super chat after this one. By the way, Corey Davis has applied for reinstatement to the NFL. He, he had retired last year. Let's see about that one there. So first, beer bong coming up. Everybody spam JT in the comments section. Coming in big with the 50 bomb for us. <sighs> I get one more of the hard Mountain Dews instead. Yeah, I just they're they're better. I like them more. Uh, as we continue here, give me three realistic free agents. Thinking Dalvin or Dylan, Tyron, maybe a guy like MVS for speed. Who knows though? Uh, I'm gonna go Gilmore. Uh, I'm gonna go. I mean, I don't know how realistic Tyron is up here, but I'm gonna speak into existence. Tyron Smith, speak it into existence. Tyron Smith returns, and. You know, Deonta Foreman, A.J. Dillon, Edwards Alaire, Jarek McKinnon. I honestly, I don't want Dalvin Cook. We will talk about that momentarily. I, I genuinely do not want Dalvin Cook on this team. He wasn't good last year. And I have not seen very many, uh, you know, soon-to-be 30-year-old backs figure it out and get better. Some guys can last, like Derrick Henry keeps lasting, but these we, we, we told you guys last year, these signs, because I was doing biking shows as well, and we kept talking about, like, guys, Dalvin Cook is regressing. The, these signs are there. The advanced math was right. They had shown, he had shown the signs of it, and then it got even worse than what I thought it was going to be. But the, the, the signs had been there. People wanted a victory lap, this one good run against the Ravens. So be it. All right. 
Oh, F.A. Obata's back with the Commanders. I thought it was an Aiden Dirty. So I don't know. Is this, is this guy Aiden Dirty found? Aiden Dirty found one of those guys for the NFL. I forget who it was back when he, back when he was doing the uh, player pathway stuff over in Europe. Here we go. That's gold. <sighs> Pain. <clears throat> so cold. Uh, the cold is what hurts for me. It's the cold and the carbonation. It's it's not that it's beer. For for those, it's the carbonation, and then for like I, I can't do those beer boots. It's just too much liquid. All right, from Mark. Uh, thank you, JT. By the way. There were players and coaches available that would have been upgrades for us, and it's so frustrating seeing Skeletor stick with the same old peeps. Allegedly, Jerry wanted to fire Mike, and Steven talked him out of it, which would not be the first time that's happened, by the way. My nightmare scenario is they hired Jason Witten as their head coach. It'd be a very Steven move. Ecuador man AOG. You calling it Tom? UFLD MVP Basham, next, next cowboy. They'll sign somebody from the UFL probably. They're two for two, by the way, or the, the UFL, XFL, AFL, whatever you want to call it. They're, they're kind of two for two. Seth, Curtis Samuel or Marquise Brown to Dallas? I think Marquise Brown's going to command too much money. Would not be surprised if he's a chief. Maybe they wait till after the trade luxurious Sneed potentially to somebody. Uh, keep an eye on that one. Although, if that continues to be an unsigned thing, yeah, I, I, I would like more speed on the outside. I would have interest there. But I think the cost is going to be too much for the Cowboys, sadly. Curtis Samuel, though, that, that could work. Um, now he's got injury concerns. That makes him affordable, though. Uh, but that, that one could certainly, certainly work. All right. Um, oh, sorry. Big TD the one. I'm sorry. I, I typed in big TD the one and, like, got excited about it. And then I forgot. Uh, about all things uh, from that perspective. Uh, Kendricks was a good signing. We should have another linebacker and address DT. If Mozzie doesn't show up, teams get us at the run because instead of passing, uh, they uh, let them the rush get at them. Uh, they run us and let the Packers get at them. Fat is only. You know what's noteworthy is that's not why you lost the Packers game. They cooked you on third down through the air. Now, second half, you couldn't stop a nosebleed. Uh, I will make note, by the way, uh, Brian Broaddus mentioned this on the, the draft show that Mozzie's going to go back to one technique and the weight's going to go back up. So thank goodness. Uh, but I, but I, 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 I do agree with you. I still, you still need a defense tackle. I don't want to end the year with just Mozzie Smith. Like I, my mindset right now with Mozzie is this. I'm not out on Mozzie Smith year one. I'm, I'm not going to punt on him altogether, although... I feel less confident coming out of the combine talking to people than I did going into it, and that makes me very nervous. But I'm not going to bail on him in year one. But year two, okay, you got to show me something, bud. You got, like, it was, to an extent, hoping for a Tank Lawrence outcome. Tank Lawrence is not very good in year one. Then he got going. Then, then, he, then, he, then he got going quickly. Um, so I need something uh, to, to move forward here. Um, for, for, for Mozzie to feel better about. You know, we, we shall see if that happens. Um, but, you know, TBD on, on that front um, as things currently be said. I'm hoping for more. Hoping for more. But we shall see. Every 250 likes. And I, and I would also definitely add DT in line. I would love to draft a linebacker too. Gerald says, Mozzie's so off the ball. That's, that's not a weight problem. So what's funny is my current operating theory is the weight was an attempt to figure out the slow off the ball. Now, the slow off the ball was, was a coaching thing. At Michigan, they did not do much. Uh, they, they, they asked their guys, and you go watch Chris Jenkins for Michigan. He does the exact same thing. He is slow off the ball. It's the way they're coached. So you, you got to work that out of him. But he's athletic, so I'm not overly worried about it. JT, another $50 super chat. This one is just going to be the one beer bong, not a two for one. I'll, I'll go ahead and do, do, do the truly on this one. I'm not going to make you get up again. Oh, you're going to get some water. Good. 
This show is more entertaining than the real Cowboys right now. You're damn right it is. Also, if, if I didn't respond to Seth, uh, will you be live for the draft? Absolutely. We will be live for the draft. I would. I love the draft too much. I do too much work for the draft to not be live for it. Um, we've got a source off, by the way. Source off going on. Ian Rappaport says the Jags are going to sign Eric Arms. Come hold this for me. I want to screenshot this. Come hold it. Says the Jags are going to sign Eric Armstead. Diana Russini says the Bills are going to sign Eric Armstead. I'm going to tweet this out here real quick. We've got a source off, folks. Did somebody make a typo? Eric Armstead's about to sign with somebody. Is it Jacksonville or is it the Bills? Good old-fashioned source off, things you love to see. Someone's going to change their tweet. B for the Bills, J for the Jags. Who, who, who is it? Who thinks actually going to get Eric Armstead? We've got the rare source off. Nor half the time when, it, when there's a source off, somebody made an oopsie. Uh, so this is going to be fun. Did they tweet it at the same time? Like a minute apart. Oh, wow. Like a mi two minutes ago, Rappaport, Jags are going to sign Eric Armstead. Diana Russini, Eric Armstead is signing with the Bills. I can't wait to see what happens here. I wonder if it was like, I, who was the first guy that kind of flipped like during the whole, during the whole free agency? Well, you period? would never see a flip that quickly. Well, there was somebody. Yeah, it was, it was the kicker. It was the kicker. Yeah, Will Lutz. That said, his, he told his agent a certain number. If they got there, tell him yes. And then so they told him yes, put the information out. And then there was another team that came in, whoever he ended up signing with, the Broncos. Denver brought yeah, him back. Came back like minutes later and was like, we'll do this number. And he was like, well, I'll do that. Yeah. And it, was, and it, was a good, like, it was a good like 30 minutes. Yeah. An hour gap. So we have a source off here. Ah, oh, Diana deleted, deleted the, the tweet. Oh, Diana. It's going to be the Jags. L's in the chat for Diana. It's the Jags. She deleted her tweet. Oh, you can't do it like that. Oh, oh poor I Diana. I like her too. That's a shame. Happens to everybody. All right, uh, let me do this beer bong that'll answer the rest of the, rest of the question here. Bottoms up. We appreciate the super chat, JT. Both of them. <sighs> By the way, the Jags absolutely just spent their Calvin Ridley money uh, on... Um, On Eric Armstead. A trade, too, by the way. Sam Howe's a Seahawk. I think that takes him out of the Justin Fields market. So uh, where is Justin Fields going to play? Does it put the commanders in the Justin Field market? Oh, because they they're going quarterback receiver? two. They're going quarterback two. You don't think they could get uh, Marvin Harrison? Nah, they're going quarterback two. I, I would bet all my money quarterback at two. All right, I'm going to do the math here. On, this tr on the trade here. Because there's multiple picks going on. All right. So it's, it's Sam Howe, a fourth round pick, 102, which is uh, 34 on the trade value chart points. A sixth round pick, which is, I got too many tabs open here. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, I think Armstead was a Trent Bulky selection all those years ago. Kind of funny. Um, a sixth round pick at, which should be in, if you want to go to the, probably got to go to the full one, though. This, 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 see, this is, this is, that's why I don't like it. It's very deceptive. That's why I don't like that graphic as much from Sam. Uh, sixth round pick, number 179. That's worth eight. And then the Seahawks are getting... If you don't have it, that, that, that's fine, too. You don't have to stick with Armstead. I know we had the graphics issues today. 
a third round pick for the Commanders, 78 overall. That's uh, 59 points. A fifth round pick as well. That one is 11 points. So the total trade value there is about 28. So that is a early fourth for Sam Howe. I, I, would, I would guess that's like the minimum bar that the Bears are looking for. Like, I'm going to tweet that out too, so don't mind me. If you haven't already, go follow Tom on Twitter. He's hilarious. Also, Schefter says that with Howell to the Seahawks, the commanders can now zero in on a quarterback with pick number two. As if they weren't already? I'm, I'm gonna, as if they weren't already? I'm going to tweet that at him. Yeah, even if they didn't trade. Like, <laughs> we, he could have been your backup. It's fine. Got him for a fourth. That's, that's kind of a good deal for the commanders. Adam Peters might be cooking. There you go. Uh, all right. I'm going to finish the $50 from JT. I didn't get to the back half of his question because um, I was doing other things and news was happening. Uh, why delay real sing out? They did the same with Desmond's market. So the difference here. And A, oh, this is perfect, Chris. Uh, nice job. The difference here is that they have allowed Gallup to talk to other teams about a trade. Now, I think the end result is that there will not be a, a, a trade. And there, 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 there will not be, you know, a, a deal that happens. But it does allow Gallup to figure out his market and figure out what he's going to get. So... And I think you'll see Gallup get cut and signed somewhere fairly quickly. So they're not, they're, they're not doing, they did Dez dirty. I did not like the way they handled the, the Dez s situation. And I will, I will also be mad because they fucking cut Dez when I was doing a walkthrough for my goddamn wedding. And I couldn't do anything. Literally, I got out of the car, Dez gets cut, and Brett goes, can you do anything? I'm like, I'm at the, the food tasting for my wedding. I can't. I literally couldn't do it. I, I will never forgive them for that. I, I, I thought they did Des dirty. I think they're doing a little bit better by, the, by, by way of Gallup. Uh, also, I know you hate Cook. He's cooked. Give him a vet man with, a, with camp could, could be it. Again, there, is, there has never been a bad one-year deal with no guaranteed money. But if you sign Dalvin Cook... I still have to find a, a run or two backs. So it, it's not a bad thing, but it doesn't do anything for me, you know? From Wes, do we start a GoFundMe page to help free agency? Yeah, it's my Venmo. At, at what going down? Eh? <sighs> oh, wait a minute. I got a, I got a text from my buddy who's a big-time Cowboys. Uh, not a Cowboys. He's a Panthers fan. He likes to troll. This, this could be... This, this could be pretty funny. I'm going to pull this up here. This, this, this might be worth bringing up on air is why I'm doing it. Because he led with the people want to know. It's always something good. We'll come back. It's my phone. I'm not even loading. For Mark, is it true Oprah and Lizzo are our new starting defensive tackles? Back to that. They're going to stop that run, baby. <laughs> They're going to stop that run. I'll tell you that. Um, oh, well, he has multiple texts here. All I see is the people are asking and I will answer. Uh, who's about to? Oh, it's 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 about our it's about our golf bets. Those are, again, we, we got some fun here. Um, I I did. I I I may have not been hundred percent sober. Uh, I did a I did several reckless bets uh, for the Players Championship uh, on top forties and make the cuts uh, for a, like I did like the max number I I could do. So I've got a, I've got a three to win a hundred. A three to win like two hundred, a five to win a thousand dollar bet. I, I was I was just like just like just spending you know reckless by my standards. Ah, I think we're in trouble, Chris. Ah, uh, we we are we are not in great shape. Uh, Will Zalatoris, who I need to have make the cut and finish top forty, is two over through seven. What happened to Jordan Spieth? 
Jordan Spieth was one under with four to play, or five to play, and went bogey, 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 bogey. Oh, two man. over. Hovland was playing well. Hovland was, was two under. He doubled the last. Oh, boy, we're in trouble. Yeah, we, we have multiple guys on the outside of the cut line. The, the bet's not going to hit. It's not going to hit. We're in trouble. There goes $10. <laughs> That's why I never bet more than that. Never bet beyond what you're prepared to lose, folks. Don't do it. Uh, Travis, what about the pass rush? Stephon Gilmore, no O-line. We need all of those positions, to be honest. What's your main target position-wise other than offensive line? Three-way tie. Running back, defensive line, interior, and edge. I want one. I would love a veteran edge rusher. Do that, I'm set. And know that you enter a, a make-or-break uh, you know, season with Sam Williams. O-line is obviously O-line. Um, Gilmore, Jordan Lewis is back. So Jordan Lewis is, is back, and that means you don't have to go corner, but I want to keep Stephon Gilmore. Um, DT, you're thin, man. It's Mozzie Smith, Chauncey Golston, Osa Odegizua right now. I want one or two guys and one or two guys to compete for a spot. I just texted him back and said, we are, we are in bad shape on the bets. I need, Will Zalatoris was playing great golf. And then he doubles the, the seventh like an idiot. That's a Dallas boy too. I always cheer for the, for the Dallas guys. You guys want to know a story on golf here? How about this? I have some juice. Um, not going to reveal the source. Um, you guys remember Bryson DeChambeau, this is, this is like going to appeal to like 5% of the That's the guy audience. that people hated, right? Yes, they hate okay. him. They hate him. The tour players do not like him at all. Uh, what I had been told was uh, that course where they had the, the Byron Nelson for a couple of years, uh, that all the, all, all the pros are members at. Bryson tried to join. He went to SMU. He's from the area. And the tour guy's like, no, 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 no. We don't want him here. That's how much they dis dislike him. All right, but that's, just, that's between me and the thousand people watching. Don't, don't tell it. All right, Cameron Edelson. Thoughts on drafting Trey Benson if he falls? I think he's a better fit than Brooks and more realistic would be an instant upgrade for us. First off, two caps, two claps for Cameron. Uh, if he's there in round two, I'm down. He'll probably be a top 50 player for me, and I do have him above Brooks. That might have been different if Brooks had not torn his ACL. Um... But I, I don't I, – I think that there's a chance he's there in round two. All right, Daniel, $10. That puts you in to our – another entry, I should say, into our signed Drew Pearson mini helmet giveaway. Sam Howe looks at his value. Trade Dak, get Justin Field some second, third round picks for 2024, 2025, 2026, clear some cap. We're at $2 million cap. We can't even pay draft picks. So – I. I what the fuck up? So I, I will say, don't fall for the pie lie that's going on here. You will be able to pay your draft picks with ease. And Steven kind of let it out of the bag. The year one cap number is not a big deal. If I wanted to, I could, I could still free about $40 million in salary cap space. I would ex By paying CD Lamb, you save salary cap space. He's a $13 million cap hit. I could save uh, above that, but I could save $13 million by paying him whatever he wants if I structure it properly. Uh, I could extend or just restructure Dak Prescott. I'd rather make a decision uh, and save up to $20 plus million in salary cap space. When Van Der Esch retires, I'll save at least a couple million dollars. If I wanted to, and maybe you don't, and that's fine, I could restructure Terrence Steele. I could restructure Donovan Wilson. I could restructure Brandon Cooks and save 10-ish million dollars. Um, I could, uh, I'm thinking one I left off here. I could restructure Trayvon Diggs and save almost $8 million. That's a lot of money I can save. 
Now, eventually that bill does come due. It absolutely does. Um, but it's not the end of the world because the cap goes up. And if I'm going to have those guys on my roster, you know, would you rather have $10 when your budget is $100 today? Or would you rather have $15 with a $100 budget and you still get more money next year on a higher budget? You know, it's 10 and 100 versus 15 and 200 or 15 and 100 versus 15 and 200. You'd rather have the more money now, right? Because you could roll it over if you don't spend it. Now, with that said, I think it is telling. Nobody wants Justin Fields. And I am a bit surprised by that, frankly. Now, in terms of a rebuild strategy, I don't hate this. If I, but honestly, like I am, I'm, I'm over the DAC conversations. It, 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 it's political at this point, or equal to politics. Everyone is entrenched in, in, in their side. They either love DAC or they don't. They want to move on. They don't. Everyone, everyone, because there's enough of a sample size to know if you want to drain the swamp or not, so to speak. So if you want to rebuild, sure. Now, this is a rebuild strategy because I, I don't think Justin Fields is going to be a franchise quarterback. Now, maybe he can be a starter. He can be a Baker Mayfield, different, totally different play style guy of like a top 15-ish guy. I'm going to be a top 10 quarterback at this point. I'm kind of disappointed by that. Right spot could maximize him a, a bit better. As a rebuild strategy, this makes sense. But once you cut Michael Gallup, you are paying for your draft picks. That'll free up like $9 million. Double what you need for your, for your draft pick class. So don't let them fool you too much. If you want to rebuild, okay. This is a good rebuild plan. Now, I would maybe if you want to just let Lance be the guy and save your draft picks, that's fine too. But like, it's a better plan. Honestly, it is a better plan than doing nothing. And that is my concern. Is that the Cowboys are going to do nothing. Nothing. They're going to sit there and do nothing. And that bothers me in the end. Because I would rather have a plan here. Travis Hollinsworth, free agent pass rusher we can get. What about a CD contract cost? It's going to be $30 million for, for CD Lamb. You should pay it now and beat Justin Jefferson to the market. Now, Lamb's camp will not want to do that because why would they? Not in their best interests. Do it now. Uh, I think Yannick and Gakwe could make some sense. Cheap money. Veteran pass rusher. And, then, and honestly, you might be able to find that after the draft. From Mark, uh, our team reflects exactly what I've been saying. Some elite players with a ton of Golston-like guys need upgrades from Golston. I, 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 I would agree probably too. Can you find them though? Not so sure. Omar, a dollar. Thank you, Omar. I appreciate that. Lone Wolf, recap from today. Right there. They brought back Jordan Lewis. That's it. That's it. Uh, Daniel, speaking on fallacies, which aren't going to happen to Tom, I know we have the no trade clause agreement, but the rebuild starts this year. Trade all the good players to get rookie contracts and picks. If you want to rebuild, Daniel is 100% right. This is what you should do. And that's kind of like my, my core issue here. What, what is your plan? Like, do you, do you want to win in like a five-year window? Because I, I think you can build a good team if you were more aggressive in a five-year window and then start your rebuild. Or do you want to do what Daniel wants to do and start that rebuild now? In which case, let's do it. And, and you, you, you could honestly be forced that hand, that Dak's hand a little bit. Don't, don't, don't bring back Jordan Lewis. Don't, don't resign Eric Kendricks. You know, if, if you want to have a real rebuild plan, go to Dak and say, Dak, we love you, buddy, but we're, we're going to rebuild. So 
where do you want to go? We will let you go, and, and we'll, we'll take something but not a lot back and accept that he has the power of the no trade clause and get the third round pick or what, or just cut him and eat the dead cap number now if you're not going to get that, frankly, and accept the fact that you've you messed up last time and take your medicine now. No? I'll respond to Madman in a second here. Um, and honestly, this is not going to be popular. Trade Zach Martin. Say, Zach, you're a Hall of Famer. We're not going to win in the, in the next two years. We're going to go let you chase a ring with somebody. Like, I, you know, Tank Lawrence, great player, run stopper. We're going to let you go. Anyone over the age of 30, we're going we're gonna to let you seek a trade. And we're going to tear it down this year. You're going to tank, get some, get some money off the books, get some draft picks, blow it up for a year, and then spend money next offseason and draft that quarterback in the top five. Start Trey Lance for a year. If he's great, okay, then cool. We're, we, are, we are lucky. So, Matt, man, I'm not saying Kendrick is, is a bad signing. If you want to win games now, it's the exact type of signing that you need. But you also need more than that. So it's the lack of a decision in the mid, it's just kind of riding that middle ground that I don't like. I would rather go one way or the other. And you, you still keep guys like, you know, CeeDee Lamb. You keep guys like Micah Parsons. You keep other guys who fit your call three years from now window. Those guys you keep. Trayvon Diggs you keep. Stephon Gilmore you, you let walk. And you set it up for, we're not going to win in 2024 or 2025. We're going to go in 2026, 2027. That's a plan. That's a good plan, frankly. But they're doing the middle ground. Mark, I'd love Dak to leave. How would a trade happen? Dak has complete power. He has a no trade clause. And he also knows he's a year away from free agency when a trade would not impact uh, the, the stuff his new team gives up. They messed up the first time. Grant, what picks could be gotten in a Micah Parsons trade? Three ones? Right? It has to be three ones, right? And like, if you really want to jumpstart your, your rebuild, that's how you do it. Also, the odds of you getting a Micah Parsons player with any of those three first-round picks is profoundly low. That's, kind of, that's why you don't see those good players get dealt like that. Unless they say, F you, I don't want to be here anymore. Like kind of Ramsey did. You know? $20 from Wes, a shot! The Jones boys don't want to win a championship because they're scared of what comes next, which is dumb because the bill always comes due. Eventually, we're going to lose Dak next year and suck ass for five to ten years. So that, that, this, this is my concern, that they're kind of playing the middle ground all the way and not, not going out and being aggressive. So I do one or the other. And at this point, honest, my issue is we're already past it. At this point, it's too late. You're in the offseason. Players have moved. You can't tear it down now properly. You can't be aggressive properly. It's, they are playing for the status quo, and I hate it. Cheers, Wes. Dan, look at the Panthers. They waited too long and tanked the next 10 years of their trades, all for not trading their best players. We go all in. Or end up with nothing. Three to five years, rebuild fields, best bet. Again, I agree. That, see, that, that, is my, is, that is my concern. Is that the Panthers, in hindsight, they probably should have not fired Matt Rule and kept losing games. Uh, like, they screwed up. On the flip side, the Saints screwed up too. The Saints were aggressive. And they were like, Ah, uh, let's try to make it work with Derek Carr. They should have taken the, the rebuild them. They flipped Brian Burns for a fraction of what they thought they were going to get. They missed out on that top three pick organically, gave up so much to get. 
uh, to, to, to get it. I, I would agree. Either be aggressive in this, in, call it whatever year number you want, three to five years, and try to win, and then rebuild, or start the rebuild now. And I think Daniel and I are agreeing for the most part on that. We might disagree which side to go on that. That's fine. Daniel's got a plan. That's all I want is a plan. A lot of you guys have plans. That's all I want. Give me a plan. I don't think Dallas has a plan other than like, ah, we'll see what happens. We know what's going to happen. We know how this story ends. The Cowboys will win 10 games. They'll be 2-5, and 2-4, and 3-4, and 3-5, and five, whatever, against above 500 teams. They'll be about average against the best competition. They'll get to the postseason. They'll get scared. The head coach will change the game plan and not force feed C.D. Lamb. They want to run the football. They can't run the football still. The, the quarterback and the offense will start slow. If the defense does its job, they might come back and win. If they don't, they'll lose. That's how it goes every year for this team. It's been that way for several playoff games in a row now. So make your decision. Just make, make one of them. Because either one, I can get excited about, and I can lay out plans. Doing nothing? I got nothing for you. Daniel back into the, uh, the Venmo, or the 50-50. I'm drinking too much. Uh, they're back into the um, uh, Drew Pearson mini helmet. Thank you. JT, Cowboys going to have a big signing trip for the weekend. They can Dobbins or Gilmore. You know what's funny is neither of those are big. It's a, real, it's a vet minimum back in a veteran corner. If they do, we'll have a video on it. Make sure you guys are, are, are subscribed. Luis D. Garza signed McKinnon and Tyron Smith or Beckton, and we are set. Draft running back, O-line depth, McKinnon, fast AF, she'll flash in both Super Bowls. I, I don't see that's the thing. Is I, I, that's the issue, right? I still want to draft both of those spots. So I, I don't trust Tyron or Beckton to stay healthy, and McKinnon can't be my lead back. But you feel better about it, right? That way you can you don't have to go O-line round one, running back round two. You could go like maybe there's O-line round two, running back round three, and you take a receiver in round one, right? Like that's, that's what I would want to do. I totally agree. Chris B, this team is not a top five in NFC, let, let alone top two. I mean, they, when was last time they were top two in the NFC? It's been a long time, right? Even this year, like, were they really, were they really top two? Maybe they were close to it. But, the, but there was still a gap between you and the 49ers. We, we believe that. Niners, Packers, because they beat your ass last year. Lions, probably give the edge to the Eagles, frankly. Um, beyond that, the Seahawks honestly don't scare me right now. Rams are good. Insert NFC South team. There you go. Daniel, how many of us are tired of going to see the Cowboys play a Buffalo, at Buffalo Wild Wings and mocked for being a Cowboys fan? We're sick of mediocrity. Tank two seasons, three to five years, best players on rookie contracts. It's a plan. It, it, it's a plan that isn't just, let's see what happens this time around. I get it. I get it. When I get trolled in the office every goddamn day, how many times Chase has walked in and gone, how about them Cowboys? Every loss. Every loss. And what am I going to do? Point to the 28-year-old championship trophy? It doesn't do anything for me. All I want is a title. So it is perfectly reasonable for anyone in the comments to disagree on what the best path is. But as long as you have a plan, that's all I'm asking for. Madman says, uh, stream Madden and show how you would build the Cowboys. It's not fair. You can, you break Madden. Because then I play the games and I'm dropping. You guys, you guys, uh, I wish that streaming had been around back like in, in college for NCAA 14. Because how good I was at that game. Here's how good I am at that game. You can ask anyone in the chat sports office, they can't beat me. They can't. I'll play my boss, James. It will end at halftime. I'm up by 40. I, I, I played that game so much, I broke it. 
Like, I, I know, like, I know how the AI reacts at this point, and I'm just like, they're doing this. Because the AI always tells you, like, they always showcases what's going on there. Like, even, even if the computer's playing it, the corners are, are going to uh, uh, adjust. I beat, my, uh, I, I beat my RA one year in freshman year not throwing a pass. I ran the ball every play. I won, like, 21 to 7. Didn't, didn't, I would drop back and just scramble. South Carolina, Connor Shaw and Marshawn La- Lattimore. All I needed. I can't wait for college football 2025. It's going to take me a longer time to get, to get like used to it because I haven't played in forever. But I was playing that online dynasty up to three years ago. A couple, a couple, a couple other media guys and I would always do it. Blast. Uh, Blazing Daily. FBI. Uh, I want that Gilly Bland Diggs trio, please. I would agree. Uh, it would make me a, a happy camper if they brought back Stephon Gilmore. Not, not even a high bar to clear uh, as far as I'm concerned. All right, so we will go now to the final segment of today's uh, long, long stream. Let me respond back to Brett. Okay, Dolphins also brought back Deshaun Hand, so we got to cover that later on here. It's fine. Uh, we'll recap some of the rumors out there around the Cowboys, Tyron Smith, Dalvin Cook as well. Then will any other Super Chats that, that, that come in, uh, we'll get to that here in just a little bit, so do not miss out. Today's Cowboys report is made possible by 8 Sleep. Did you know that sleep science shows our body temperature must drop in the early and middle parts of sleep and then rise in the morning? The 8 Sleep Pod 3 cover helps with just that. $200 off at 8sleep.com slash chat sports. Did you also know we have an Instagram account specifically for the Cowboys Report? Follow us over there at Cowboys Report IG for shorts, clips, photos, and a whole lot more. I want to begin today's show uh, with some Dalvin Cook conversation. As I, it's not actual journalism, uh, as I social media my way through, uh, Dalvin Cook's activity makes it seem like he wants to be a cowboy. Uh, Cook followed a couple different cowboys, I'll call them content creators. Kind of a weird group, if I'm being honest here. Uh, Skip Bayless, uh, Marcus Mosier. Martin Talks Cowboys, Ernie, RJ, who I love, uh, Debbie Talks Cowboys, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, and then also like these tweets on Jane Slater saying the Cowboys are cooking something about A.J. Dillon, okay, and then Michael Gelkin's tweet about Eric, Eric Kendricks to the Cowboys. I don't know about you guys, kind of sound like Dalvin Cook wants to be a, a Cowboy, right? I mean, he doesn't follow many people. He did not follow me, which is probably for the best given how many Dalvin Cooked tweets I have out there. Because I am not very interested in Dalvin Cook. Uh, I was more interested last year, but it always came with the caveat of the signs of regression are there. He's gotten worse each of the past three seasons. And then last year, whoo boy. I I made the comment of like, you know, not sure he's Dalvin cooked yet, but like I am, I am worried he's Dalvin cooked. And then he was he was even worse than I thought he was going to be for the Jets. Three point two yards per carry, and you can't just, by the way, blame the offensive line because guess what? Brees Hall ran for about a yard per carry more, so the O line wasn't good. But Dalvin Carey had a career or tied for career low yards after contact. Had the one nice run against the Houston Texans, right? What was it, 17-something yard run, something like that? And then averaged like sub one yard per carry after that. People try to take the little victory laps like, look what Dalvin Cook can still do. You didn't want him. Then we're silent when he played nine snaps total in the playoff games combined. And had, you know, seven carries for like six yards after that. Like, he didn't do anything for the Ravens. Had one good carry. That, that was it. So I, I get you need, you need a back. I don't want Dalvin Cook. 
I still need to sign two guys or draft two guys if I sign him. What? But I believe, I believe in democracy. I believe in it. So would you sign Dalvin Cook? Why for yes and for no? It's the pinned comment on today's video. Sound off in the comments section. I will also make note that J.K. Dobbins, a Texas boy, has, asked, has liked some tweets about the Dallas Cowboys, Des Bryant's one in particular. Dobbins offers you more upside. Uh, lower floor, higher upside for a guy that hasn't you know, done anything uh, with injuries the last, basically the last two and a half years, frankly. The running back room needs help. I don't, by the way, people keep acting like Malik Davis and Snoop Connor aren't, aren't under contract. They keep saying Deuce Vaughn's under contract. Got about Snoop Connor, guys? Come on, come on, big media. Do better. Uh, Rico Dowdle's a free agent. Deuce Vaughn, Malik Davis, Lipke, and Snoop Connor's the worst running back room in the NFL. You got to do something at running back. And honestly, it could wait until after the draft. I think some guys will be unsigned. Ten names to monitor here. J.K. Dobbins is the biggest boom or bust option. You also can't trust him by himself, frankly. That's a bad idea. You know, Dalvin Cook is more Cook than Ezekiel Elliott is. A.J. Dillon was worse than Elliott, but given his, his advanced numbers, you know, success rate, et cetera, and his age, you'd think he'd be better than Elliott was, or will be, I should say, in 2024. I think guys like Alexander Madison, Deonta Foreman are kind of like, replacement level backs to be your early down guy. It's not a great group. Edwards Alaire, Jarek McKinnon, Cordero Patterson, Rico Dattle. It's the four Spider-Man meme of like, these guys can help you on third downs and be rotation pieces, but you still need the guy in that running back room. I really regret missing on Zach Moss, not going to $4 million for him. Draft pick will happen. A veteran probably needs to happen as well. Today's show is made possible by 8 Sleep. The 8 Sleep pod cover will improve your sleep automatically by adjusting your bed's temperature based on your individual needs so both you and your partner can have the right temperature for them. The cover is added to any bed like a fitted sheet is and allows you or your partner to cool or warm your side of the bed as low as 55 degrees and up to 110 degrees. There's no better way to improve your day-to-day -day life than better sleep. And the easiest way to do this is with the 8 Sleep Pod 3. Start your new year right and invest in the rest you deserve with the 8 Sleep Pod. In addition to keeping you the perfect temperature at night, the pod also tracks your sleep and health metrics. On average, pod users uh, see their sleep quality improve by 32% after just a month on the pod. Go to 8sleep.com slash chat sports and get $200 off plus free shipping on the pod cover by 8sleep. 